Book Group with Mary. Through the Mists by Robert James Lees. Chapter 7. 20th of June, 2012. Kentucky, New South Wales, Australia. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thanks for having me at Kayabra again. <laughs> I really like, yeah, we really like being here, so. Um, okay, how's book group been going for you guys? Good. Good? Yeah, yeah, thanks for participating long distance, and it's nice to hear that, yeah, that you're enjoying it. <laughs> um, today we're going to talk about chapter seven. No, we're not. Yes, we are. <laughs> I've just got the wrong page open, because I finished my chapter. <laughs> uh, chapter seven, The Door of Hope Ajar. So, um, what do you guys feel about this chapter? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we probably need the microphones, don't we? So, if yeah. Eloisa, if you go first. Yep. Yeah, I loved it. I was just um, blown away. It's just so beautiful, Law of Attraction at the moment. Just blown away by God, really. And yeah. how, um, yeah, how resistive I am to God. And how beautiful it could be now. Yeah. Do you want to pass behind you? I, Catherine, I, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. I enjoyed the um, – and learning about more about the longing and desires yeah. and how three times – well, I, I found three instances where the longing and desires were, were answered. Yeah, yeah. And all in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd I thought, love to talk to you guys about that more, actually, as we go on. Yeah, and I thought it, I, I really love this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Teresa? Um, I found with this one was, I feel it was actually the first chapter that I really got emotionally. Right. Because um, yeah. um, the other ones, I, I've read this before and I loved it and I loved all the visual imagery. But then after I finished the last chapter, which I struggled with feeling. The magnetic uh, chorale one? Yeah. yeah. Did anyone else struggle with the magnetic chorale? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Took us three weeks in Queensland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it was just, I just, I thought, I really want to go emotionally with this. Yeah. And, and I really did. And it was from the first paragraph, just, you know, wow about desire and how yeah. it just comes to him. And then the stuff about. God and the church yeah. and I really felt how I feel about the church yeah. and what it's done yeah. and um, the thing about loving others, we can't love God until we love each other yeah, yeah. yeah. just so much in there yeah, there's a lot there wasn't there yeah. Yeah. and in a very succinct way mm. yeah um, yeah, yeah. I thought because it was seven pages, I thought, oh, this won't take as long as the last one. <laughs> yeah. But it's like huge. I wrote more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot there. Hey, yeah. yeah. I've I've found you know how you're saying you emotionally connected with it, Teresa. I find that um, when I'm emotionally open when I read this book, it's like a almost like a roller coaster. Like there's oh wow, well, oh my gosh, oh, and it's bringing up stuff for me. Or I can read it completely from my head and I go. Yeah, right. I don't really get it, you know. Or it just depends on where where I'm coming from on the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave. Yeah, I, I must admit, um, when I first started, I mean, I've read through the mist two or three times already, and going back through it and asking the questions. Well, I don't know where God's truth is in this. I don't know how it affects my life. And it's like I'm realizing now that I was resistive, yeah, you know, myself, and. Going through it again last night, uh, the second time in a couple of couple of weeks, it was like, yeah, well, I can start to feel where I don't want to be involved. I don't want to believe this, and it's not so much a, 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 a I'm a bad boy, but these are the errors in me kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's just showing to you different places where you there's errors, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, and like I was saying earlier, you know, I'm realizing that I don't want a personal connection with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you discover why that was, Dave? Not, not to the the causal level, but yeah. that um, I don't trust God. I don't trust anyone really. Yeah. I have a lot of fear in my heart, yeah. um, and that I don't want to open my heart properly to anyone. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think this chapter shows us um, a lot about a trusting heart, doesn't it? And Fred is such a beautiful example. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, if we go, if we go behind you to Alexis, and then across to Matt, and forward to Laura. Um, yeah, for me, based on well, last night's conversation with Dave, what I'm finding is that um, we definitely take in, you know, through the filters of our emotional injuries, and it was just quite interesting to be like, it's almost as if we had read two separate chapters, Dave and I, yeah, talking wow. about it, you know. Yep. And, I mean, it'd be interesting to bring up when it's within the context of what you bring up later. Yeah, yeah. I, this is what I love about doing this book as a group yeah. because you, you get to go, oh, where were you on that? Oh, uh -huh. wow, there's a whole other thing that I didn't see or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, you know, just as we discussed it, it's like, you know, like the emotions start to rise up. We're like, kind of like, oh, no, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. not how it went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's confronting. It's not allowed to we, go that yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, cool. that's kind of cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Matt, did you have something you wanted to say before? Yeah. Yeah, kind of along the same lines. Like uh, I was speaking with Joy and Cavill um, this morning um, and they were discussing a certain point within the chapter and I realised like I'd read it but like I'd been engaged emotionally and then I got to a certain point just disengaged. Yeah. And then kind of studied that intellectually yeah. and then re-engaged later yeah. on. And it's good to – it's so good when we hear everyone else's kind of responses and feelings about it because then we see where did we disengage, why did we disengage. Like, totally. Mm, yeah, it's a great, great opportunity for everyone. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, the, um, the, the bit about when he said, hello, brother, um, that – I really feel that there was just such a, um, a huge transformation in that for me because the more I kept reading it and feeling that softness and I can't even describe what I was feeling when I was reading it, but it's like when you're in harmony with God's love and God's laws, there's this har harmonious that just oozes out of the voice, it oozes out of presence and you need really, I don't know we all say it, but there's nothing to do to earn it or to get it, it's yeah. just the softness of the soul, and then yeah. that naturally just um, just comes out. So for me, I've just been realizing every thought that's out of harmony, and just going okay, and just being gentle with myself, and I'm feeling a gentleness more in my body than ever before because I'm not going oh god, that's out of you know. I'm just okay, recognizing it. No, like there's just a softness that yeah. all from that one that one page of when he says hello brother lovely so often we just block god through our insistence on judging ourselves don't we because god's not up there judging us and when we insist on judging ourselves i find that time and again with myself uh, uh, he's like i can't connect to you you're totally out of harmony with like how i'm feeling about you and how i'm like trying to teach you to teach to treat yourself and yeah it's a, it's a big and a big it brought issue. up huge like when um I used to get disciplined it was through heart like a hard discipline and now I'm learning how to speak more lovingly to just in the tone of my voice and how my voice like so if I get irritated just through my hearing my voice I go off and I already know that there's irritation in my soul that I need to own so my voice is my guide to what's really happening so so you're um, using that to kind um, of connect yeah, more to your emotions to my truth of my soul yeah. not what's going on in my awesome. head if my voice is getting fast or forceful all these different afflictions and in how it's resonating, that's the truth. Yeah, isn't this so powerful, hey? We do so much to create facade, uh, to present this other image of ourselves to the world that we think will be more lovable. And then our whole body just is indicating what's really happening in our soul. It's showing us what's really in charge. It's not our mind, what we think we want to be, but this big soul. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Okay. All right, well, let's get on to just discussing the chapter, hey? So what happens right in the beginning of the chapter? Who can just tell me what happens? Teresa? He experiences, it's sort of like he observes what happens when he gets a desire. And that's what struck me was it's just, you know, this rush of, it was like a flood, he said. And, it, um, just, and then it sort of comes to a crescendo and then just ebbs away, but it's still there. And... 
before he even thinks that he's going to be able to formulate something, it's answered. And he goes, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. That, that so, so what is Fred showing us in his desire? What, what's his attitude to desire? If we go to Dave. It's like even for a brief time, he allowed himself to be fully immersed in his desire. Absolutely. Did anyone reflect on that in terms of their own self? Yeah. Uh, Cavill, do you want to uh, share a reflection on that? Well, for my, my own self, uh, I really feel the lack of desire and, and how um, I never seem to be allowed to have any desire and just felt a lot of grief from, from where I saw that he was at and where, where I was at with desire. Yeah. And when you say you feel like you're not allowed to have desire, mm. who's disallowing you? Um, at this stage, it's, it's only myself because yeah. it's... Yeah. 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 So why do you think you disallow desire inside of yourself? Why do I disallow desire is... Um, I, I just feel that... that um, my mother in particular didn't allow desire in me and, um, yeah, I'd, I'd be punished or made wrong whenever I uh, followed a desire. Yeah, yep, yeah. And, um, yeah, and now I do that to myself. Yeah. So um, can anyone else reflect on that for themselves? Do, do you relate to that? And so what is it really that is preventing us embracing desire? Given Cavill's example, so she's saying, yeah, Eloisa, yeah? I, I feel it's fear for me. Yeah. Um, like a huge, yeah, fear. So what mm. are you afraid of? Um, I mean, well, I, I, like I was reading it and what came out for me was like the wildness of it and the, oh, how it overrides everything and all of those words that came up and I was just like, shit, like what, if, oh, excuse me, sorry, what if I, what if I did? You know, sure I engage desire but it's very calculated or it's to a certain degree, you know, and mm -hmm. I was thinking about it with my shoes, it's like I have visions of these things, it's like, well, what if I did create that? Like then what am I going to get? Yeah, and it's it's sort of like um, yes, it's it's the it's the heaps of fears for me, and yeah. obviously there must be a causal thing that's probably very simple, which I didn't get to. Yeah. So maybe that's I didn't all right. That question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you go behind you, to Vanessa. Sorry. I think it's firstly we can see okay, we're all Fred's got this open-hearted view of desire, doesn't he? That is feels a bit scary like it's so it's a rush it's like water it's flowing he's he's not curving it in any way so we immediately go shit <laughs> that feels scary but let's get like why what, what does it feel like Vanessa? I was always told um, by my mother growing up that um, be careful what you wish for because you'll most likely get it and then you won't want it yeah so any desire that I had was like oh do I want to put the effort in for that and um, it's really been reflected to me at the moment with my three-year-old. Mm -hmm. All this anger comes up in me because she has such strong desires yeah. and I get so annoyed and, and I'm only just trying to bring that back into myself and, and it's like, oh, you'll just make a mess. You'll just ruin everything yeah. and you're just going to create work for me and it's like that, um, that if I let go of my desires that... Someone's going to be angry with me. <laughs> if you let them them come out, then yeah. someone's going to be angry. And in fact, your daughter is doing that, and you're feeling angry. Exactly. With her. That's yeah. what, so. That's yeah. what it coined in me. I thought, yeah. oh, well, okay. Obviously, this is not not the truth. Yeah. yeah. And what do you think she's triggering in you, though? Why do you feel angry? Um, there's probably a jealousy there as well that I'm not allowed to do it. Well, yeah. How come you can do what you want? Yeah. yeah. And then there's part of me that, that is um, encouraging that. So I've noticed I want to be angry. Yeah. Like I, I'm drawing it out of her. I'm actually putting her in situations and drawing it out yeah. of her. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, I feel it's pretty it, gross. Yeah, but I feel that's a very powerful example that is there in front of you to kind of really confront this emotion, you know, mm -hmm. um, that 
he's, he's God's presented you with this beautiful child who's full of desire and you're not just even reading it in a chapter. You've got a little being there and you're going, ah! And all of the stuff from your childhood is just getting totally turned up in that moment. So, yeah. Like she had a desire, the property that we're on now. There's a gorgeous red belly black snake that lives under the house and um, she came out and was sunning herself. She wanted to run over and cuddle and kiss the snake. Wow. You you know, that was her desire. So (laughs) that brought up a few things for me. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> so, and I'm also wondering, can you have the opposite injury? Like, you know, has she inherited and have well, I created an injury where she just... she can have rebellion against your fear. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you can imagine if your mum's afraid of everything all of the time and it's just oppressive, sometimes you're going to feel like going, no, nah, mum, I'm going to do exactly what's going to freak you out because I feel horrible, you know, I need space. So, yeah. yeah she's definitely got that. Yeah. Personality, yes, yeah. yeah. a gift. A gift, yeah. <laughs> if we come back to Eloisa, you thought of something just then. So go on, doesn't matter. I was thinking about the fear and maybe it's like a false belief underneath it, like the false belief of, but I've forgotten what the false belief was. Um, sorry, it came and it went. That's all right. Um, if we go to Alexis, just... Um, yeah, for me... Like, I'm doing a lot of things around inventions recently and allowing my desires to flow like that. And, you know, a lot of, I mean, I feel like to try and invent something, it's like, you know, you you spend hours creating this thing only to find out it doesn't work. (laughs) Yeah. And so, and then so finally I I create, I didn't create, but I mean, I designed and I made this thing. It's a rope pump that actually pumps water uphill. Yeah. And um, it, it actually worked, you know, and I was like going... Um, wow, this is the first time, not first time, but it's like I didn't allow myself to get excited yeah. that I fulfilled the desire. Yeah. And so it was just reflecting to me like, like, look, like all along you're, first of all, afraid to have desires. You're, you're in fear while you're executing your desires. And then when you actually succeed, you're not allowing yourself to rejoice. Yeah. And so like I just, I just jumped up and down like going, eh. <laughs> <laughs> dancing around out there and yeah. and I what felt, did that feel like was that hard well did... at first i felt so much of god's love come down yeah it was really amazing and it was yeah. just like i just got this message like yeah you're supposed to have fun you yeah. know like this is this life's about having fun not not toiling and struggling yeah and then I just kind of allowed myself, you know, to just kind of like like a cowboy go, Yahoo! <laughs> like, you know, I did that on and on for a little while. And then all of a sudden it turned to fear. Yeah. Which Eventually. is what blocked you from doing it naturally in the, in the first, first place. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and so then it was like, oh, wow, like, you know, this is it. It's like you get like, you know, wildly excited and the next thing you know, you're getting whacked by your parents for, yeah. you know, saying shut the shut yeah. the fuck up or whatever, you yeah. know, like you're just out of control, yeah. you know, so yeah. it's just that whole dynamic of like, you know, going like, oh, well, we could get excited. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we just have to feel through this, this fear. Or, exactly. And God wants us to be excited. Exactly. You know? Well, God created us to be children, yeah. you know, like yeah. in that childlike state right, of, wow. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, like, the reason why adults get angry is is they're completely overwhelmed by that excitement and obviously triggered. Like, well, you know, said and everything yeah, else, it triggers you know. their own suppression in sure. their childhood or the pain that they felt when they yeah. they went for something, it didn't happen. They they want to they think they want to prevent that pain inside of their yeah. child. Yeah. When really, um, you know, when we fully embrace desire, and yeah. this is what well, before we get to there, I want I want to see if you can help Cavill out because. Cavill was saying, yeah. yeah, she was saying she feels like she's not allowed to have desire. Yeah. And I asked her, why does she feel like she's not allowed? She said, well, because my mum shut down my desire. Mm. Now, is that why she's not allowing her desire in her day-to-day life? No. So, Matt, mm. you've got your... Can you help? Um, I, feel, I feel like um, it kind of from there went to Eloisa um, about that that fear yep. uh, and I feel like it's very much probably like a strong fear of disappointment, like a fear of, a fear of the pain associated with desire. Yeah, well, let's go back to Cavill because she can probably answer it by now. Do you think you can? I agree, it's a fear. What do you feel you're actually afraid of? 
I'm afraid of punishment. Yeah. And you're carrying this, because of this experience with your mum that's unhealed, you're carrying this expectation all the time and you're actually enforcing it on yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see most of us doing with desire, you know. We enforce it on ourselves, um, thinking that happened in the past, I haven't properly grieved about that and I'm just going to shut it down inside of myself because, simply because I feel like I can't bear that emotion. Mm. Yeah. So it's really about humility, isn't it, yeah. to that emotion, which is really what Alexis was talking about. Yeah. If you just go behind you, Cav did you want to say anything else? Sorry. No. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <coughs> Sorry. For me, it was um, fear of ridicule because I, I'd associate with the desire and get really excited, but I've spent all of my 60 years being put down by people saying, oh, who do you think you are? You can't do that. What would you want to do that for? All that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's similar, but just a different emotion. Yeah, absolutely. And for each of us, it's probably a different emotion depending on what happened to us in our childhood mm. surrounding desire. Yeah. If you go next year to Matt. Um, I, I've got a question. Um, yeah. Can uh, a child has a pure desire? Can uh, and God has every de like all of her desire to answer that prayer? Yeah. Um, can parents then, through their injuries, interfere with the law of desire and the law of attraction and prevent it, like, like prevent that desire from being realised? And so there's a lot of... Can that happen? It's a good question, Matt. Hmm. I feel that the answer is yes, but I'm not... Because I feel that God set up this special dynamic between parents and children, hasn't he? And yeah. while a child is just learning about the use of their will... And the, the pure design, I feel, is that parents would teach children um, all about God and God's laws and the truth about love through this parent-child relationship until the point where they fully understand their own will and then they go off into the world and exercise that will in harmony with love. Because we're all injured, obviously, it doesn't happen that perfectly now. And I feel that often when children have a desire that's quite pure... Um, there is still, because the parents are in charge of their environment, uh, there is the capacity to stifle that. I'm not certain about it, though, and I'm going to defer. I'm, I'll ask AJ and I'll answer you uh, in the next book group, hey? Because I think it's a good question, yeah. yeah My feeling thanks. is yes, that we can as yeah, parents. That's the feeling that kind of came up inside of me that yeah. that happened when I was little. Yeah, yeah. yeah and It's very confusing then because then you have this like a mistrust of desire, a mistrust of law of desire, I guess. Yeah. If it hasn't, if you haven't seen it actioned when you felt like you maybe had a loving desire when you are little or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, for me, I feel that way anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So often it's that we're powerless to experience things or even just experience the grief of not having the desire fulfilled that then creates this mistrust. You know, often... Yeah if we just were allowed to have the desire. And what I love about Fred's description is that he has the desire, it rises like a flood and then it trickles away and he's totally humble to that whole process, isn't it? He's trusting that whole process. How many of us get to like here? All right. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> so how many of us get to there on the little bell curve and go, well, what do we usually do at that point? <laughs> well, there's a number of things. What do we do if we go to Karina? I've got like an inbuilt radar system. Watch out. Is this right or wrong? Are you going to be humiliated? You need to stay in control. Yep. Are you going to get punished? Watch out. Yep. So that it gets to there and fear kicks in pretty much. Yeah. What else do we try and do sometimes, Laura? Um, I, I was just going to say, yeah, I get, um, I start to feel emotionally overwhelmed and my belief is that I can't cope, that I'm not big enough to feel the, the waves of it. Yep. So it's, um, I can't, I can't, I can't cope. Yep. Okay, too much now. I'm yep. bailing out. Yep. yep. If we go to Pamela. I know this is just the surface, but um, I just feel I don't have a right. No, I just feel that... Um, um, if I'm following my desires, then I'm not doing God's um, um, put God in God first. You know, that's the thing. Put God first, and everything will follow. So I said, well, all right, I have a desire, but then I judge it as being a needy 
or an addiction or um and so it's sort of not my right to <laughs> to carry out that desire yeah. so someone's and the truth is you know what happens often is that we're taught in our childhood you don't have the right to ask for that you don't have the right to want that and do you know what ironically happens then sometimes with our desires is that we do become needy with them as adults and we do create addictions just to avoid that emotion don't we yeah, so it's a, it's one of those strange um, things that often happens. Alexis, I um, tend to criticize myself. Like mm -hmm. I'll say, "Oh, it's a stupid desire. It's a waste of time. It won't work out. It won't work anyway. You know, yeah. it's not going to make me any money or something." Blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah. we get to that point. Fear kicks in. Then then the inner critics. You know, the mind goes right now. We're going to crush this. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that we don't have to experience this really scary place. Yeah, and, and my experience was I would allow, uh, in the past I would say, yeah, and stop. And recently what I did was like, I would say, well, I don't care if it doesn't make money. I don't care if it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And what I found was eventually it led to other desires that did work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. There's one more thing that, uh, yeah, Eloisa, that we do that I really, um, when we get to this point... I don't know if it's... Oh. We're looking at, I just felt like sometimes there's an arrogance that kicks in. Like at the top, you think you're so great, which I suppose is just the flip side of the same the same thing we've talked about. The same feeling that... Yeah, so we, can you describe what you mean by that? It's um, like this is as we... The desire hasn't peaked yet. We're just entering desire oh, for okay. something. Are you talking about at the peak? Yeah, I don't know. I just had that thought so I don't know exactly where I was just thinking sometimes in my life like I've, I've started something and like been really into it and then I've gone oh I'm so great at this like I haven't actually felt that yeah but I've gone oh I'm so good and then I've uh, like fantasized about how amazing it could be and how everyone's gonna well, I suppose the addictions of what I'm gonna get from it yeah and then have not done it yeah so yeah I didn't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like a, a feeling of wanting to feel masterful in the desire. Is that what it is? Yeah, re like feel good, feel great, um, that I'm worth What's something. What's it going to give me yeah, this achievement? What am I going to get out of it? Like, yeah. This is something that is mine, I suppose, you know, not yeah. a gift that God's given me. Yeah. Um, but I own it yeah. and I'm, you know, <laughs> and it's a real self-delusion. Actually, because like, inside you actually don't feel. No, you've inside kind of I'm feel like, like, oh my god, I'm crap, and no one's gonna like it, and it's gonna yeah. be bad, and it's gonna yeah. fall down. But on the out, I like, I never say it. I've had, I just remember as a kid, not as a kid, as a teenager, being like that. Yeah, you know, like, I'm gonna be the best actress in the world. Everyone's gonna love me. Everyone's gonna. Yeah, didn't feel like that. No. And then every everything that I went to do, flopped. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But God was trying to help you get to that other emotion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm not sure that yeah. wasn't the answer yeah. that you wanted. But. No, there's something else that I see a lot of people doing. Um, joy, and then we'll go to Dave. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Um, I think what I've done is to get to that place where I'll talk myself out of it. So, in other words, put myself down before someone else does. Yeah. And then make up a story. So, there's always, there's, there'll be a story that I make up um, to justify... Similar to what Alexis said, to justify why I shouldn't do it, why it's not that yeah, good. But yeah, it'll, but it'd have to be a story that would be um, socially acceptable. So it would have to be a good story, obviously to avoid my emotions, but yeah, also, yeah. 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 Okay, there's something else I'm seeing. And let me, let me just bring you back to Fred's example. So Fred's just seen the magnetic corral, hasn't he? I just wanted to mention as well that that camera got bumped, so I don't know if it's moved off its... Um, um, He's just seen the magnetic corral. He's sitting there afterwards and um, this huge wave of torrent of desire comes up in his heart and he sits there and he allows the fullness of it, doesn't he? He just sits with it. He allows it until it... And then it kind of subsides a bit. Now, what I see many people doing, if we just... Let's bring the example of even if someone wants to go and talk to AJ after a talk... Can anyone think of what actually happens when people reach this point in the desire? Teresa? I don't deserve it. He wouldn't, yeah, I'm everyone not allowed keeps saying to. this stuff. No, no, that's it's everything. We've heard all that before. A lot okay. of us do that. Yeah. But Is it, oh, how I many of you it. actually just stay sitting in your chair? Yeah. Matt? 
Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you actually do. Okay, Vanessa. <laughs> I think it alludes to something that Laura was talking about earlier. For myself, I'm realising um, about the softness. Mm -hmm. So as, as it's sort of building, it's you do this sort of cheer squad kind of thing yeah. where you go, stuff it, just do it. <laughs> Just, just do it. Come on. And it's this harshness. And then very often people get up out of their chair and they're there. Yeah, that's right. And I'm, I'm going to do it, oh, uh, uh, whatever the results. Okay. It's like yeah. me sending an email to, to yeah. AJ, you know. So what do we, what's happening in that place, Matt? I think we're skipping over some emotions actually. There's a, there's a lack of humility. You yeah. 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 Because remember, we're only here on the bell curve. Yeah. We haven't allowed the fullness of a pure desire to grow in us. Instead, we have the desire and think, I can't handle this place, I'm going to get it fulfilled. <laughs> Do you see yeah. then that it is a and hard... And then it's a demand. And then it becomes a demand. Mm. Whereas ironically, just as Fred experienced, if we sit with a pure desire and we really allow it in our heart... What usually happens? What did Catherine say at the beginning of the group? What happened for Fred? It happened straight away. It was fulfilled. Away. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. What, what i kind of just been reflecting on now is that whenever it's a subject, like the desire, whenever it's a subject that our parents have emotions about that they don't want to feel and automatically then there's a demand at us that we don't feel as well, I think maybe that's probably where we might get a bit stuck with the humility part of the desire. Absolutely. But I guess what I'm trying to contrast is we can say, well, my parents were blocked to that, you know, therefore I'm like this. And the truth is I am like this because of things that happened, but I have the choice to be humble to the desire. Right. And actually only by being humble to the desire am I ever going to get to experience the full extent of the emotions that I've suppressed from my childhood about desire? Revelation, thanks. <laughs> okay, Vanessa. We have to take the risk, the risk, what we can perceive as the risk. Yeah. So, Mary, is that sort of like the, the other thing when we're processing our emotions and you go, oh, I think I'm getting this. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm going to ring someone up. Guess what? I just had an emotion, you know, yeah. like rather than... Allowing the experience yeah, we to get its to there. fruition. I noticed that. Oh, okay. I used to do this on the blog all the time. I'd go, oh, my gosh, I've had a semi-realisation. I've got to go and write about it. Instead, of, because it was so overwhelming to just have that full experience with God. So I really pulled back from that whole thing because it was really a way of me avoiding that big... It feels like a wave crashing and we're so afraid of the big waves crashing over us often, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Laura? It's like that expansion of the soul and um, that um, 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 uncomfortable place where we want to actually shrink it to go back to where we know. So we find whatever means we can relate to to shrink it. But exactly. it's us that are shrinking it because we don't want to feel the uncomfortability of the expansion of the soul and going into a, a new place. Totally. The control, yeah, the fear thing. Teresa, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I felt Fred just gave us a beautiful gift there, didn't he? And the description is so emotive, isn't it? It's like he's saying it's a torrent, it's a wave. It's, and even he lets us ride the wave to the point where he says, and it trickled away. And you think, oh, he's not going to get this desire. <laughs> you know, and, and then I was like, oh, wow, Fred, you know, I don't want to feel that feeling inside of me. <laughs> you know, I can see what... And then it happened for him. So what really struck me is that he trusted that whole process. Uh, he was humble to that process. Um, yeah. And then, then it happened. And then what happened? So what happens next? Mahanine actually comes to him. And what was his experience? Laurie, you alluded to it at the beginning. So what, what did Fred feel after that? Um. I'm, I'm finding it hard to capture in words, but all I know is he just embraced him and said, hello, brother, and just that, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Eloisa? I just thought it was really, because he's had this big, like, feeling of, like, wanting it, and all he said was two words, and that was it, that was enough. And it was yeah. like he'd been fulfilled in yeah. everything that he could possibly have imagined and more. Yeah. And I, love, and I think later he says, and I still don't understand, or even 
like coming to terms with what I've just experienced. I can't frame why this was so amazing for yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. He says, um, had there been discord in my past experience? If so, it was obliterated from my memory by the music of his voice. Like, this is how powerful it was. It was just like, wow. Yeah. So, uh, Catherine, you wanted to say something? I just wanted to say that it's all feeling. He's saying that language has been exhausted. Yes. And so it's just all feeling. There's no mind there or no, you know, it's just what he feels. Yeah. And why do you think it is all just feeling for him? Why is this, why is this well, man coming up to him and just embracing him and saying, brother, why, why is that so emotional for Fred? Well, I think mainly because his desire has been fulfilled immediately. Yes. And he thought it was an audacious desire as well, didn't he? Yes. He thought, I couldn't possibly talk to those guys, but I can't stop this big feeling of wanting to. And then it happens and he's there hugging him. And he's like, wow. So there's this feeling of, exa you're exactly right. I've had this desire. It's been fulfilled. And what else has happened? What else is there in that exchange? Do you have an idea? But probably um, acknowledging him as a brother and um, not as somebody, um, you know, out of... Out of his league. <laughs> like, like we normally feel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to someone else. Uh, Dave. It's like <clears throat> in those two words and in the feeling that was coming, it's like all, everyone, every single person is welcome in God's eyes. Yeah, so how did Fred, ex how come Fred experienced that when my Hanin said that? He must have been open to it somehow. Yeah, and what about what was coming, if we go to Alexis? Um, my take on it is it was really like a soul-to-soul, -soul, it was a soul-based connection that was happening. Well, yeah. Fred was already very humble, wasn't he? he was, his heart yeah. was open. Yeah, it was, it was all yeah. coming from the emotion yeah. space. Yeah, you know. but, but what's coming from my name, Eloisa? Mm. Love, total love. Yeah. Well, that's what I felt. Yeah. It was just like, it didn't need to say any more. Um, Mine was just when, like, sometimes with, with you and AJ, and it's just like, as I said before, it's like I don't experience that, like, so often in my life that when you actually get loved, it's, like, more opening and more fulfilling than anything else. Yeah. And yeah. it's a pretty confronting experience. Yeah. yeah. Which you can't really explain. Which demonstrates the power of love, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. That h how mighty is love that if just if we love or we receive love, it is the most blissful, humbling powerful we feel empowered you know we feel all these amazing things so yeah uh, if you just go back to Laura and that's why when he had that desire and there was no demand or expectation placed upon my Hanin and then it was love like just love and desire that actually pulled him towards him and then um, when the balm of that greeting or the balm of that love, like just in that one moment, there was such a profound healing. And for me, it was just the power, like just be praying about to experience how the power of love, it's not about knocking myself on the head to get into a causal emotion, yeah. but just the power of love can dissolve and eradicate and melt away so much. Exactly. And, and was I saying this before the camera was on, but I was saying if we just opened ourselves to love, to God's love, then we, every, every error within us would be triggered. We would, we would grieve a lot, but we would be healed so much more rapidly than when we try to pull ourselves into these emotions and figure it out, you know. It's just having, it's, it's having the humility to open to God and to desire to understand things from a God's perspective not our own. Remember in the beginning we were talking about judgment, how we insist on judging ourselves and God saying, I don't see you like that. You know, when are you going to open up to how I see you? Yeah, yeah. And just on that, that's where up until this chapter, um, as I said earlier, I was so resistive because, and and just angry because I was like, well, well, it's fine for Fred. Like, 
you know, he's done all this good stuff on earth and yeah. been altruistic. I'm not going to end up in this space. And when I get there, it'll be nice and I'll have these discoveries great. But I'm going to end up in hell. So yeah. I should probably learn about that. <laughs> and uh, But I did re-wander it in the spirit lands. And I know it has error in it. But that actually opened me up again. Because in that, even though it's it's natural love, it is... Every time he um, progresses, it's because he has an emotional breakdown. Yeah. And I could see that. And yeah. and just uh, the hope that it doesn't matter where you're at, all things are possible in God. Yeah. So And and yeah. Vanessa, can you see that you've already uh, you've how old are you? <laughs> when are uh, you gonna be I'll passing? Be forty soon. <laughs> yeah. So at forty you've decided where you're gonna end up after you pass. Is that is that how it is or well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I might let a little bit more desire happen yeah. <laughs> to connect to God well, between now and then. Yeah, and as this, uh, as we'll we'll probably get to at the end of this chapter, there's a lot of good words said, isn't there, about what we can do with our life on earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So that was pretty powerful for Fred to speak to my name. What happens next? <laughs> What Mahanin begins a discussion with him, doesn't he? Matt, what does he say? Uh, Vanessa, if you just, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I kind of feel that before we go on to that, it uh, hasn't really been said yet that receiving the natural love from Mahanin actually changed Fred's soul. Yes, yeah. Hang on, just wait for the mic. Good question. Um, that, yeah, that's what I was just wondering. Um, is it really what he's feeling? He's actually not feeling my Hanim's love. It's just that my Hanim is, is such a perfect, humble conduit for God's love. So he's actually feeling God's love? Or is it is it that my Hanim's so developed in natural love? Or I, Okay, not... this is a good question. Let Rather than me answer it, you guys can answer this. <laughs> okay, Dave. I felt with the description in the chorale uh, in the previous chapter and, and the amount of love that he had for him that, uh, that he must have been a celestial being. Yeah. There was so, so, much, so much love and acceptance and, and whatnot. Yeah, I feel my needs at one with God, definitely. So, but what is he expressing towards Fred? So that's the real question that Matt posed or was that Vanessa posed, wasn't it? Is it God's love he's feeling or my needs love? I believe it was both. Okay, how is that possible? I'm not sure, but I'm, I can. I feel that certainly God's love was involved, uh, and and maybe, maybe some of his, maybe some of my own um, own compassion from his time and, and 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 injuries and stuff he went through on Earth, perhaps. Okay, uh, Teresa. I think I think I'm projecting here, but it's um, the actual love of another brother um, really got to him. Really, because um, I know, uh, yeah, it would for me. When when I get the love of another person, not from God, just from another person, I think, oh, gee, you know, they think I'm special, sort of, yeah, something like that. Okay, let's answer the question though. What is what is Fred encountering in his Interaction with Mahani. Can can a man give another man God's love? Igor, do you have your hand up? No. Uh, Joy? Um, I've just re listened to some of the information where AJ was talking to the oneness blessing people. Yeah. And he talks very specifically there about nobody else can give anybody God's love. Um, and in this case, I feel Mayani, and as you said, is probably at one with God. So he has a much higher level of natural love from his own development and from his own receiving of God's love. But it is purely just his love that he's giving. Yes. So receiving. it's impossible for us to give... I can't give God's love no. to Eloisa. Only God can. However, next question. What happens to the quality of our love when we receive God's love to such a great degree? If we go to Matt. Yeah, I feel that um, what happens, especially when you're at one with God, is that you feel God's sentiment so strongly and you have the same emotion. And so it was kind of like my Hanin's love was like a, a lesser echo of God's love in a way. 
yeah, when we're, when we're at one with God in terms of love and God's emotions about things, obviously when we love another person, through our own, our own natural love is actually refined in, in, t- in the way that it's expressed, in that it's not in disharmony with God's love in any way. Yeah. 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 So that's obviously pretty powerful, isn't it? Mm. And in a way, because, and this is what's so powerful about AJ or someone else becoming at one with uh, one with God while on earth, their presence is actually, because they are receiving God's love and have received God's love so much, and then they're here physically, it is as if God's love is here physically. They can't give it to someone else, but certainly because the quality of their love is so in harmony with God's love, mm. it it can open another person, can't it? Yeah. If we go behind you to Alexis, and then we'll come forward to Karina. Yeah. So um, my question is, as far as we're concerned, everyday folks here, is our love that you know we end up giving to others any part? Of, if any part of that is is in harmony with God, does God also participate in that love? I understand the case of a celestial. When you say participate, well, it's kind of like this feeling, like you know, like I choose to to love somebody, and it, let's just say it's in harmony harmony with God's love too. Does God go? Oh yeah, like I'm gonna join in that party, <laughs> uh, you know, like kind of automatically. <laughs> well, let's be clear, God. My yeah. need isn't giving God's love, but He's no, giving yeah. His own love right, in harmony. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But obviously, when we if, if we really take apart what you're saying, yeah. if, if I desire to love Teresa in the yeah. way that God loves her, right. obviously God's going to be pretty excited about that. That's what I was feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. going to be part of the party. He's, he's, <laughs> yeah. He might come and give me some love because there's such a pure <laughs> desire. He, because my desire is in harmony with him uh-huh. at that moment. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. But he, he can't actually augment the amount of love I have inside for Teresa. You yeah. know, that's my own development. Sure, you know? yeah. But yeah. obviously through receiving his love, immediately, wow, yeah. errors are triggered, I'm getting refined, and it does actually refine my love for Teresa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Pretty yeah. cool system, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. really yeah. nice. <laughs> All right, Karina and then Laura. Um, I think it's a two-way transaction. And what really moved me in that whole thing was... Sorry, can I just stop you? What's the two-way transaction? uh, Between um, Fred being able to be open enough to receive this love. Yes. um, From Mahanine. Mahanine. And I don't know if I'm saying that right, actually. I could be slaughtering it. Sorry, Mahanine. And then Mahanine being open to Fred. Is that what you mean by the two-way? Yes, but... That what preceded we were talking about before, with Fred being so open that he would ride like I felt like a big dipper yeah. ride, and he allowed it to go to the depths too with the ebbing away, yeah. and in that was like a letting go of the desire in a yeah. sense, and because then he had done that and completed that whole cycle, he was open to receive a gift. So when I receive a gift from God or th- through another and I'm really in that humble place of open enough to receive the gift it always feels like it's tenfold because I didn't orchestrate it I didn't make it happen so so that just really touched me that Fred's humility to that degree to go to the depth of that big dipper ride yeah then he was so lacking in expectation that Wow, here whammy comes God's gift. And, it's and he like, could fully whoosh. receive the yeah. gift because, yeah. it, it, like you said before, AJ or yourself might come here and give us love, but how often are we really open enough to recognise that love and fully, ta- uh, fully receive it? Yeah, and it's a very good point, Karina. And I talked about you know where we often get on the start of the bell curve, hey, where we freak out and we try to control or we try to just enact the desire so that it'll just be over with and I don't have to deal with this fear that's coming up or whatever. Um, So Fred showed humility there and that he allowed the fullness of it. Very often on the other side of the dipper, if, if we even allow that, you're right, what do we do then? We go, I, don't, I can't feel the badness. I can't, I'm never having another desire again. I can't, this is terrible. I hate you, God. Now I'm not getting what I want. I just really went there in my heart. And now, you know, it's all preventing just the ebb. 
And, and Fred didn't, he just went, okay, wow, 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 oh, okay. And he was just free with that whole emotional process. And you're right, because of that, he stayed open. Yeah, because he yeah. said he reluctantly got up to leave. Yeah. You know? So he, he'd let go. But the, but he when he says in his reluctance, he means that the desire is still there. Yeah, it's just ebbed and he's been able to let go, okay, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's okay. not the key to life, I'll let get on go. with things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. then bam, yeah. wham, comes yeah. God's gift. And I've ex- I can really relate to that. Yeah, awesome, mm. awesome. Yeah, it's a very beautiful example. And also, um, if you think about it in terms of, his desire was obviously pure. We know that for a couple of reasons. How do we know that? How was it pure in its expression? Part of it I've already... Ex- go for it. Oh, I thought you were answering. <laughs> Matt? Um, I guess one of the reasons I feel that it was pure is because he was sending that desire to God, actually, not to my Hanin, as in, like, give yeah. me what I want. He wasn't demanding or needy, was he? He no. just... He, he allowed the desire yeah, without he felt any it in controls. And, mm. Just let it be his own experience. It's like that thing that Vanessa related it to when we kind of start to have an emotion and then we want everyone else to be a part of the experience rather than just allowing its fullness. So that, that indicates purity, doesn't it? Um, what 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 else indicates purity in our desires? Uh, or what? How do we define a pure desire? Alexis, um, you know, in Fred's case and in general, um, that it's it's not covering an addiction. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not trying to meet an addiction through right. the desire. So by definition, then, what are we trying to do? Just actually choosing to love. Like yeah, you felt so love. it would be in harmony with love, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be in harmony with uh, an emotion out of yeah. Uh, yeah, that yeah. wasn't loving. Right. So yeah. it wouldn't be a pure desire wouldn't cause unloving action, like an unloving action. Or demand. Would it? Yeah, 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 or demand. Or which is, I guess, an action. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Else, what else kind of is an aspect of our pure desire? Yeah, okay, now it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> when it benefits not just you, but others around you as well? Well, mm-hmm. that is like the byproduct, actually, of pure desire. It's, it's what happens when we're in pure desire. It serves not only us, but it serves God and everyone else. So, um, yep, that's true. Therese, oh, Pamela, and then we'll go to Teresa. I ju- um, just had a thought. Pure desire, it's only after the fact that um, if you don't get it or you're going down... You don't get angry that you haven't got it. If it's an addiction, you get very often very disappointed that's the case. or angry that you don't. You're not receiving your uh, desire. That's very often the case. Although sometimes, you know, we might have. Yeah, if our desire is pure, there's no demand about it. But if we do resist grief or disappointment, we might actually also resist the you know resist the experience of letting go of a pure desire so yeah but you're right generally it's associated with anger yeah what is really pure what's desire an expression of if we go to Teresa it feels creative to me yeah some you're making something yeah or growing in some way and where does it come from from my soul (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh yeah Vanessa Yeah, everyone. It's like a true expression of your individual soul. Your personality, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, more questions or comments on that, Dave? When I was reading it, it, to me it wasn't so much... it, it, It became apparent that it was a pure desire, but for me, whether the desire was was pure or tainted, he just allowed the desire... And, and in that place, you can discover whether it's pure or not. Beautiful point. Because what will happen if we fully allow the bell curve of pure desire? What will happen? No, what will happen, really? We'll get what we want. We'll get what we want. If we allow, if we allow the full bell curve of desire and it's an impure desire, what will happen? We'll feel pain. <laughs> God will show us it wasn't pure and we'll have the opportunity to refine it. But that's what I was saying. Unless we allow the bell curve, we're stopping the whole process. 
<laughs> Does everyone get what I mean by the bell curve? I'm laboring that analogy. But, you know, um, unless we do that, we can't refine ourselves. And most of the time with desire, we're like, Ugh, too hard. Ugh, no, I'm going back. Oh, this is stupid anyway. Oh, see, God, you didn't work out. You know, every way we go, we're just not humble. And how can we grow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and we'll never find those, those impurities. Exactly. Or God won't, yeah. won't show us. And so Fred is just showing us exactly how, how to ride the bell curve, hey? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, Laura, did you... Yeah, I was just going to say that um, when the pure desire actually comes up and we start assessing if it's loving or unloving, that's when I kind of go, just, just do it and then just be open to if it was impure or if it wasn't. But if I stop it in that process, I, I lose this whole gift of actually the refinement that you just yeah. said. And just be careful as well though because I want to make this point about the desire. This bell curve can all occur without you actually acting. This is an emotional thing. He allowed the fullness of desire first to overwhelm him. Do you see the, do you see the difference? That's what I was saying about sometimes we get here and we go, right, I'm just going to do it and I'll so find out if it's true or not. called my Hanine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> you know, how are you? You know. <laughs> Or, or that's it, I'm leaving, I can't handle the desire, I'm just going to hide. You know, one of the two yeah, things the two. is what we do. Um, whereas he just sat there and allowed it to like keep coming, the how much I want it, how much I want it and not. And sometimes this is the hardest thing to do. And that's, that's the point I want to make because often people get to hear and the fear goes, is this loving, isn't this loving? I should figure that out before I go any further. You know, what are we going to, hang on, what, what did AJ say? Well, hang on, I, try to connect to God. Uh, right, you know, and then uh, nothing ever goes anywhere. <laughs> Whereas if you sit there and allow the full desire without acting, just let the whole emotional experience of how much I want it, let the emotion tell you why do I want it. What's going on here for me? Uh, you won't have to ask that question. You, you kind of know. You go, oh, hang on, there's a demand here. Oh, hang on. Oh, like, oh, I'm sexually projecting at someone else. I don't want to feel that. That's wrong. Oh, judge that. Shut it down. Whereas you can sit there, not project it, and actually feel the emotion of what's going on inside of me and you learn so much. Can I say that's really powerful? It's a bit foreign. Like yep. It's like I'm hearing something just going, that needs to be expanded, I think, for all like yeah. for all of us. Yeah. Like, me too. Because <laughs> that, that A or B is where we, everyone that I know, yep. either, either we don't yep. act or we act and then we go, oh, God. Yeah, and it's all fear and it's all head and it's, it's all, all there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. It's a, I, f I really feel it's about accessing the power of our soul in these in our growth and just allowing emotion to overwhelm us. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not quite understanding fully. Like, can you give me like an, a, a concrete example? Like, say a desire. Like I, I'm like okay. I'm hearing your words. I'm not. Yep taken it in all right so fred you know he sat there and he allowed the full desire and he didn't act yes. yeah so let's relate it to a pair of shoes because yep. <laughs> <laughs> eloise makes shoes right um so you know you often get inspired about making a pair of shoes don't you so you you get here and you get an idea you go, oh, my gosh, what if we had shoes like that? Yeah, that would be so cool. You could use those colours. In. And then very often what happens? How would I do that? Okay, well, I've got to think about how I'm going to do that. What's going to happen? You know, um, I should call, uh, what's your friend, Loon? You know, and then uh, I've got no time. Oh, now the kid, you know, and it's all, that's all fear. It, or is that going to be loving? Can I use vegan things for that? Will that work out? You know, we're not even riding the bell curve yet. You've got to go, okay, wow, what do I want? I'm going to discover this desire in its fullness. What could it be like? It couldn't just be like that. We could add this thing and that thing and there would be those colours and those textures and I really want it to look like that. And then, you know, yeah, then I could make them and I'd love to give that gift to people and wow. And it, it, through that whole process of allowing that full desire before you act or think about how am I going to make this happen, it's the how am I going to make this happen, which is often Stop. fear based thing okay I didn't think about that yeah. awesome it's so it's a little bit like just letting your idea go wild in a way in a way but feeling but you're that. connected to your heart and the desire for it so okay. 
Um, can anyone think of another example of something they desire? Yeah, <laughs> Vanessa. That, that's actually happened to me recently um, with the property that I've just moved to. It's, um, uh, and I, um, I saw it. on. I had a whole heap of real estate issues going on and my guides were going, deal with your soul stuff. Yeah. And, it, and it'll all just happen. Deal yeah. with your soul stuff. I'm like, no, no, I've got to read the paper. I've got to do, yeah. do. Yeah. I've got to keep doing. Yeah. And um, I finally sort of managed to let go of it enough and woke up one morning and it was on the net, this property. Yeah. Um, and um, I went and saw it and um, went, oh, it's pretty amazing. Oh, gee, oh, gee. And then instantly went into the reasons why I didn't want it. Yeah. So and there was the little desire, oh, I love it, but hang on, no, I can't have that. So, yeah, 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 oh, it's too far out of town, yeah. rah, rah. And... Um, then I went back for a second time and I had to just sit there and breathe and go, oh, I really want this. Yeah. I really want this. This is just beautiful. And I had to be um, open enough to go, okay. Uh, and through a series of events, it took longer to find out whether I'd actually... I was the first person with the application, but whether or not I got the property. Yeah. So I went through this roller coaster of emotions and going, yeah. oh, okay, well, all right, I felt my desire. Yeah. And then I'm just going to have to leave it now. Yeah. And as soon as I did that, the next day I got the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, and this is this, the irony I think about desire, and it's something definitely that I'm still working through. I just have a very strong sense of it. I'm not saying I've done this, but I have a knowledge of it somehow that really allowing your desire and allowing yourself to have it to its completion, like in to in emotionally, not not enacting it, it's a gift in and of itself because you're just allowing your soul's expression, you're allowing yourself to be childlike again. This You're closer, I think, to how God created you. And so you're allowing this whole big thing. And when you really are like do the whole bell curve and just go, okay, like if you sit down on the property and go, I want this so much, God, then all the fear of I'm not going to get it immediately gets triggered and if you're humble, you'll feel that and go, but I still really want it and okay, it looks like I, you know, I'm not going to get it and you, you, you allow yourself to feel that whole thing. My false belief has been that would be terrible then if I don't get it. But I really think the truth is, if you allow that whole thing, you come out of it going, wow, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, I can let it go. Uh, it didn't happen, but it felt great to feel that. And I'm actually more healed than I was before. And phew, <laughs> it's sort of like a gift. And that, that was the point that I was sort of getting to. My guides were sort of getting, helping me to... They, were making little hints that I'd get it. Yeah. But um, just that, that point. And then I came to a point, well, okay, well, if this doesn't happen, then there'll be something else, you know? Th yeah. There'll be a reason. It's yeah. not the end of the world. Yeah. But not from a head space. That's what I was going to say. You no, have to... Because sometimes head, yeah. when we're, you know, jilting along the bell curve, we engage our head to go, well, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't really matter. But when we really do that emotionally, then we can get to the other side and go, actually, it is okay. I've got an abundant soul and God's pretty abundant and it's all going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Laura? Um, I've been praying about acting, I mean, as in uh, desire in action, action. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was interesting because there was one point where I had this huge desire and it was like, I've got to act. Like it was like, I think I heard one of the talks and it's like, just non-action is, I yeah. don't know, yeah. it's stuck in, like, act, 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 act. Yeah. But with what you're saying that is an act of the soul, like the soul is in action by opening and allowing it. It's not kicking back and letting God go, yeah, yeah. like if it's meant to be, it will be. Yeah. It's an action of open my heart, Laura, and really feel it. Let it burn, let it toil, let exactly. it do whatever. Let don't go to the phone, don't go yeah. to the internet, don't go to that person, just, and in that, for me, it's the action of allowing myself to be overwhelmed that is yeah. the greatest of action for my soul. Totally. And, you know, that will lead you to physical action, but it will be action where your soul is engaged. Mm -hmm. Because the thing, the danger or the thing I see that we can do is we can live life very passively. Uh, I'm not engaging, I'm, uh, whatever, God's will, whatever, or, you know, just I'll live with the status quo. And our soul can just shrivel. 
you know, we're not, it's not engaged. Then we can hear all this truth and go, right, okay. <laughs> Emotion, action, God, going to do it, you know, push, push, push. You've got to go in your desires, right, here I go, you know. And it's all still just pushing fear-based head stuff. When we, when we find this place in the middle where it is, like you say, we allow our soul and we allow, like we have to engage it first. And then if we begin to act, whoa, every bit of feedback God gives us, hits us we can feel that as well and this is why humility this is why we rave on and on and on about humility because that's really the state of humility where i go okay god because god's in get involved in humility accepting that okay i'll be humble enough to say you made me you know more about me than me you might have a different truth to the one that's inside me but i'll be willing to feel what's inside of me right now as i step into this process with you then all of the feedback can come yeah. Can I just give a little um, example? Because every morning when I go for my walk, you know, like trucks will drive past or some cars will drive past and they'll sometimes wave and sometimes I wave and sometimes I don't want to wave and sometimes I'm like, that's not very loving, wave. And it's all this <laughs> like, oh, yeah. you know. And it's never women that wave. It's yeah, always, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. men in the trucks that wave. And <laughs> But um, this morning I was just feeling God's love and I was like seeing the world through God's eyes and, you know, everything was through. And all of a sudden every car that went by... I would feel to actually not just wave but smile like I actually and it was effortless and women were waving first so my law of attraction of having women drivers that were saying good morning to me but it was that my soul was engaged and it didn't feel like an effort I didn't even have to think it was just like oh good morning like I was like wow it's my arms is actually going up yeah and my smile is happening and it's not yeah you know morning and be loving yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, like so. This this inner person going, be loving. No, you don't have to do. It. You've got free will. No, no, you know, you're waving to the women. You're <laughs> just waving to the men. Sexual yeah. projection, like yeah, yeah. you know. All that. <laughs> gets very tiring and hectic. It does get very AJ tiring. often has said to me in the past, babe, it's so tiring doing it the way you are. If you just feel things, it's a lot less tiring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, good discussion about desire. Uh, thank you, guys. Okay. So let's move on. What happens next? How are we going for time? Ten past two. Ten past three. Okay, cool. All right, we've got another hour. All right. So Fred's ridden the bell curve of desire. Mahanin's come to speak with him. It's an amazing, he feels this amazing joy and he feels he's changed forever. We didn't get to why he's changed forever. Why has he changed forever, do you think? Matt? What do you think he's changed? You brought that one up. Um, I feel that's what love does when we receive it into yeah. our soul. It does change yep. us. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So what, what's the topic of their conversation turn to then? Dave? Just before going there, something I picked up on is that Fred's overwhelmed by the gifts of the life, of what he's experienced in the corral. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, I, and I know for me, I, I'm not overwhelmed by the gifts. I'm hardly aware of the gifts in, yeah. in my own life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, it's that open-hearted state that he's, yeah, that's enabling him to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, what did, what did they discuss? Teresa? I'm not sure if I'm skipping ahead there, but it's the thing about this is miraculous, and but that doesn't happen now. We don't it doesn't happen. So yeah. that's this huge discussion about why. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He he first talks to him about prayer, doesn't he? Yeah, and then and then he goes on to the miracles. But what does he say about prayer, or what does he demonstrate about prayer, Dave? Uh, God answers all fervent prayers, like eager, intense, passionate prayers. They mm. don't go unanswered. Yeah, yeah. Eloisa? I love this bit. Prayers are visible. Like, and I got that from the Corel one as well. Like, it overlaps, obviously. Yeah. But it's like, you see them. Their yeah. colours, sounds, smells. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and God just, he want, he's there just waiting to answer, really. 
Yeah. That's how I felt. <laughs> so. Yep, yep. He is, he's poised on the ready. Yeah. Did you guys um, hear the discussion we had about the qualities that Siamides displayed during his prayer to God in the Magnetic Chorale? No. He, there was a lot of... It's a, it's a great part of the last chapter. There's about a page of just the different qualities he shows in terms of faith and um, passion and power in his desire for God to assist in the healing. And I think it was a great example of an earnest prayer, a, a sincere prayer. Yeah. The, the, I think it comes later in the chapter, but it, it, I feel it follows from that. It was like, um, oh, man, I'm like totally losing it today. It's okay. Just have a breath. Um, no. It's okay. Yep. Yeah. Laura? Um, in that, uh, I just wrote down, um, Simedes did his all, which means di- Simedes like exhausted, uh, not exhausted, no, but gave all of himself and it was only when he gave all of himself that then God met him and gave... Yeah. So it, there was yeah, no passivity. And, yeah, that's a bit later on in the chapter, but that is exactly true. He, it, it was in the last chapter, and then they talk specifically about that later in the chapter. Um, if we just uh, go to, yeah, if, if that's all right, I just wanted to cover this this thing that Mahanin says to him about his belief about God. What does he point out about Fred's false belief about God answering prayers? He sa- Fred, he says, when in the, li- when in the other life um, you preferred a request to your father or a friend, did you not expect such an answer that it would be definite and visible? So if I asked you, you know, to help me change my tyre, ex- you know, I'd expect Teresa to actually get down on her hands and knees and help me with the nuts, wouldn't I? And, and Fred says, undoubtedly from our fe- fellow man, but then we look, uh, la, 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 God being a spirit, we have looked for his reply in a spiritual sense. And Mahanine goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> so who, what did you guys feel about that? Yeah, I guess that's where the confusion came about the divine love, natural love thing and whether he was giving... God's love because I wrote down a truth is every good gift originates from God. So every action that we do in a way originates from God um, when it's... Yeah, and that's actually something that Fred says to Myhanin in this chapter, doesn't he? Um, But what's the the lesson Myhanin is trying to... Well, firstly, is that a truth? Well, that's what I felt it was. Okay, how is it a truth? What does it mean when we say that every good gift comes from God? Well, he, he's saying that, you know, if you ask for bread, as you said, like, you'll, get, you'll get bread. So God provides in many different ways. But didn't the guy in the shop make the bread? But that's why I was saying before that isn't, it wasn't my name giving him God's love because it's actually, you know, part of God's creation. Well, no, this is but, where we need to be quite okay. specific. So we, we know that... Mahanin, now we know, Mahanin gave his love that had been refined through his receipt of God's love to Fred. So it wasn't God's love. But it is still true that every good gift comes from God. How can these two truths exist together? <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> you put up your hand. <laughs> um, um, it, it's uh, through, through the natural love in ourselves, like our desire to, well... I feel like God can, I don't know if it's influence, but if you're open enough, you, you, I might give the bread, but there's something in me that's open to actually being compassionate for the person who needs the bread. How did that get God. there? How did that get there? Because uh, I wanted to love. I wanted to. <laughs> no. Pamela? It's all right. I'm, I'm working the questions today. I, yeah. I don't know. It seems too obvious, but... In everything, in nature, we have a certain amount of God's love, which is natural love. And then we yeah, also we're getting ask very for, heady here. Just do yeah, you, you not. And then then we still receive the divine love as we open up. Our free How will. is God's love inside of us already? Well, He created everything. It's in, it isn't that what natural love is? He's given us a certain amount of His in in His image. 
Um, that, so it's already you're there. You're close, which develop. but not quite right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because it, haven't we learnt from AJ that the, the only way we can receive love is by ex- God's love directly is by exercising our will? Yeah. Yes. So, but doesn't everything in nature uh, display? He would have put part of himself in us, and that's what our how our nat- natural love comes through. It's close, but it's not quite there. Um, Dave, did you have your hand up? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to feel the fullness of the desire <laughs> to say something. <laughs> <laughs> and the disappointment if I don't get to say <laughs> it. <laughs> um, maybe I'm skipping ahead, but uh, part of the discussion that Alexis and I were having last night about this was that um, God acts through others versus acting directly. And well, this is a very important point in this chapter, yeah. So uh, what are you saying, Dave, that God does act through others? Yes, yes. Uh, and God allows us the opportunity... Um, to to express our own will, whether we wish to help using our own love or not. So how then is it God, if it's our will? Um, I, a lot of God's laws become involved. Uh, the law of desire, the, the law of attraction. Yes, they're the, God's the, laws, but they're not God, are they? No, no, but God's kind of giving us the, the, the tools, perhaps, giving us um, the impetus. Yeah, here's an opportunity to show love for a brother or a sister. Okay. There's two different things you said there. You said God's giving us the tools and God's giving us the opportunity. Now, is either of those things God giving the thing? No. Okay. Okay, so if we go back to Alexis... Um, well, this is where Dave and I got stuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because as I was reading it, my understanding was that basically we're very resistant to receive anything directly from God. And so we have to go through these metaphoric channels to receive it. Mm. Um, and so like my understanding of it was that um, we can receive it directly from God, but we just don't believe it's possible. And I think it was strange because they were saying both things in the chapter, but what I really got was that, um, that, you know, because, that basically if somebody says, yeah, God just gave me 10 grand, they'll just throw him in the slammer and say he's crazy or something. Yeah. So basically it's us that has stopped believing that we can receive directly from God. Yeah. Yeah. That is one of the points in the chapter, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so but yeah, what was our case, question? Um, we're like, how does God give to us? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's just, if And we're does open, it happen through other people? Right. Versus can we just receive it? Just receive it? from God. So if we believe we can receive it, can we not? Is, is you know... My so, yeah, question you're saying slash, slash I, I mean, I want, <laughs> I want to see it that way because I've always seen it the other new age way. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, you're an aspect of God and you're an aspect of God. But yeah. the reality is that stopped me really from having a, a, a direct connection with God. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And Mahanine makes a pretty firm point here with Fred, doesn't he? Because Fred's, if we summarize what happens in this discussion, Fred is saying to him, well, look, come on, you know, if, if we need food for the hungry, then God impresses upon someone else to give us food for the hungry. And, and Mahanine's going, well, how could you call that person one of God's people if they didn't already have that desire within them? Which is a pretty interesting point, don't you think? Mm. If we're led by love, why don't we already want to feed the starving? Why does God have to come and go, hey, go do that thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Matt? Um, well, I feel like when they've got that love inside of them, there's a lot of different things that they could do that are in harmony with love. I feel that um, if they're open to God's feelings, that they can actually get a feeling from God um, about a certain person or a certain p- possibility of an action and because they're open in their heart and they have a loving desire, then that will generate that inspiration and then they'll go and act. Yeah, but if they're already open to God and God's love, yeah. what would be happening for them personally? 
with regards to things around them. Could you like? Well, um, what, what do you mean by yeah, that question? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. This is a little bit random, isn't it? <laughs> um, so we're discussing, like I agree with you, when I'm yeah. open to God and God's feelings, yeah. then when someone's in need, if God's desire is for them to receive love, which it always is, I'll be open to receiving that. But if I already have an established connection with God and I want to refine myself in love and love in the way that God does, does God need to place pressure on me before I'm aware of that person? No. No. And really that's the point that Mahanine's trying to make with Fred. He's trying to say, well, okay, you're all on earth at the moment. You're all relying on this fact. We'll pray and then, you know, God will inspire someone else to assist us. And he's saying, just as Alexis said, you've all given up hope. You've all given up faith that God is able to directly interact with you, directly give you tangible gifts to tangibly change your soul, your physical environment. So do you, do you, you with me? Yeah. Which is quite a big point, isn't it, that he's making? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's basically saying miracles on the physical level are possible, actually. He is. Yeah, that, that like, you know, um, if a mountain, like, if it's in harmony with God's... God's God's desires and, and love and person has that desire move mountain kind of thing it will yep yep and it won't need another person to actually be the the channel through which it comes it absolutely can just happen. Yeah, yeah yeah and so if you go <laughs> um, go ahead um, do, uh, I feel, I feel like it's kind of crazy for us to assume that's not possible considering that God made the entire universe <laughs> exactly so of course he can. <laughs> Like, where's the arrogance of man? Yep, God made everything. Uh, he, he made this amazingly perfect body system that has so many inbuilt things to heal itself. He, creation, he has a complete balancing act in creation. If we just leave everything alone, everything goes into total harmony. Yep, he did all of that. He created the human soul. And then he created potential for us to have intercourse. And he would implant a human soul here. But... That's as much as it can do. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond that, his hands are tied. <laughs> and he stopped doing it. And this is the point that Mahanine wanted to, to make with Fred. Because Fred's saying, he, they start to talk about prophecy and mediumship. And he's saying, yeah, yeah, that's all in the past. We, we're taught now that this doesn't happen and actually it's very wrong. And what does Mahanine say to him about God? <laughs> Oh, I love this bit. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. And so long as he is God, the thing which hath been is that which shall be. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, okay, I don't believe that, but awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very beautiful, isn't it? And yeah. it is saying, like, if these, you know, if, if people healed through God's love in the past, why can't that happen now? If, if God, like, intervene directly in people's lives in the past why can't that happen now and why what does my name say why is this happened now yeah joy we go to joy she had a hand up Thanks. Um, really that we've given up away our power of logic and reason to the church and we've allowed the priests to tell us that um what is possible and what's not possible and really what they've taught us at the end of the day is just to sit back and think, oh, I can't do anything and that I don't have any power and, and so on. Yeah. and It's just um, – there's a whole yeah. lot more than that, but yeah. mine's gone blank. Uh, <clears throat> he says, the faith of the church is in the traditions of men, not in the living, ever-speaking God. Yeah. yeah. And the very few people who've managed to keep their beliefs alive – and not listen to the priests and so on, have been condemned as um, being foolish and stupid and nutty and yeah, even crucified, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just – and that's all because of the, the church and the religions and the yeah. – and, and, but us giving away our power too. We must have been willing to give away our power to the priesthood and listen to other teachers rather than – Having yeah. our own relationship with God and using our own logic. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. And that's what <coughs> Mahanine says to him, isn't it? That, 
well, what does he say about the, what's the qualities of the people who haven't fallen into this trap? Who haven't fallen into this um, yeah. trap? Yeah, does anyone else have? Uh, yeah, Alexis? Um, they, these are the people that trust themselves and, and they're usually outside of tradition and ostracized and called heretics. Yeah. And whatever. Yeah. 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 And um, just one, one more thing to add. I just watched the movie that's available here and it was very much about this, this woman who was so, had so much faith in God and she was about to be executed. Yeah. And I mean, it's supposedly a real movie, and she she lives in Hong Kong now or whatever. It's in the '60s. Yeah. Um, just she's like, you know, can I really use a hand here? And supposedly, what happened was they this huge, you know, blinding light came down, and no one could shoot her. <laughs> wow. And and you know, like, and all the officials are like going like, well, we won't talk about that, you know, like. Yeah. You know, and, and so. So it's, it's a it's a pretty interesting story. It's, it's what's the name of the movie, Alexis? Uh, it's China, China Cry. China Cry. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So it's a good example, and, and really, what struck me was this woman's, um, um, just like she just continued to continually have faith in the process. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's that's the example that Siamides gave us in the previous uh, chapter, isn't it? I think it's that level of faith yeah. that is required for God to intervene in our lives. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I want to go to all these hands. Teresa? Yeah, th there was another part of that as well, though, is that we, we are also doing all that we can do. Um, yeah. And this then is, we ask God This is help. the point that I want to get to. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so this is totally beautiful part of the chapter, I thought. Oh, just before we go there, sorry, just so that we have a bit of continuity, the one question I wanted to ask you about was what were the qualities? On the bottom of page 88, um, Mahanin says, well, Fred's feeling really disillusioned. He's like, well, all this truth has been lost. You're telling me all of this, you know, and it's completely gone from the earth. And Mahanin says which I found very beautiful. God has never been left without a witness. Faithful watchers in the temple have kept the lamp of revelation burning and the oracle alive, which is quite beautiful. What does he go on to show us? What are the qualities of these people who've kept the faith alive? Because I think about this in terms of me. How, how do I keep the faith, the truth of God alive on the planet? So. Um, men and women who think for themselves, who catch a glimpse of celestial visions, do not turn away and consult the opinion of any teacher as to the legitimacy or otherwise of listening to the voice which calls to them from the cloud of glory. That following the dictates of their own soul, they answer, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Yes. Um, so what, what qualities do we, what do we see? What's he saying? What do they have? The bit that I really... A world that struck me that I don't do is they listen to themselves. Like they, they, they actually are in touch with their own soul more than the opinions of others and the fears of, you know, that they create or whatever. Yeah. And it's like through that they then can connect to God, and through that they understand more than I feel I have any idea about at yeah. this time. Yeah. Um. And there's trust I think in that. Yeah. Both of God and self. Yeah. Um. Yep. Yeah. And earlier on, he, there's another description they use to describe these people. What is it? The salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. What is that quality? Humble. Humble. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> so they're showing the qualities of humility. They're people who, want, who don't rely on the opinions of others, but rather have their own personal reflection, and they establish a relationship with God. And this is what sustains them. So they're not arrogant in their relationship. Remember, they're humble, but they, they maintain this relationship with God. And this is how the light of truth lives on the earth. Vanessa? And, and would that be because we don't always, and I've always felt this, that the most spiritual people aren't the ones who talk about it or profess it. They're just living it, the, the salt of the earth. And yeah. 
uh, so it's through their actions and their living yeah. life that is a testament to God. Yes. And, uh, and so they might, and I think AJ's alluded to this, you know, people that are in the celestial heavens and most of them you'd never know, you know, some exactly. of the first people yep. to enter the celestial heavens. It's not, yep. they're not in our history books. So, you know, Fred's saying, well, where's the evidence? So it's all gone from the earth, but... They've had to sort of suppress some of that light, I guess. Yeah, or or they've they've lived a life that's very pure and humble. And, and humble, but yeah, it hasn't and been the, advertised. The earth doesn't really raise up those people that much, do they? Mm. They and and also they don't try to raise themselves up that much. Mm. If you think about our bell curve of desire, or our bell curve of emotion, very often, and like I see this. It, like I said before, in myself, we get to a certain point and we want to tell the world or have the world share in it. Now, when we're a really humble, salt-of-the-earth person who's developing a relationship with God first, we have the whole experience with ourself and God and we don't have to shout it from the rooftops and we don't... And because of that, it's a complete experience and because of that, our life changes and because of that, we then have the power to, like, truthfully change other people around us because we're living a different life and that's been reflected in my life at the moment I have finally got it after two years I've just got to live it yeah you know because I keep trying to help help yeah. my my eldest daughter or help help my sister yeah um who's probably more connected to God than I am anyway yeah. so I'm trying to help 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 yeah. and instead of just quietly living it humbly you yeah. know and then people are attracted to, to the truth that you begin to reflect, to the love that you begin to reflect, yeah, to the example that you show. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's get to the favourite bit. <laughs> They're all favourite bits for me, this chapter, I think. Okay. How do miracles come about? What does my Hanin tell Fred about that? He says, as, as Matt said earlier, um, Fred says, surely you do not believe in the literal fulfilment of that promise. Mahanine says, there are mountains, physical, mental and spiritual, he replied, and the latter are quite as difficult to remove as the former, perhaps even more so, and require equally the power of God, but it can be done. Have you not just witnessed the removal of mountains of deformity? I have indeed. How was that accomplished, he asked. And what's the truths that he then talks about? Teresa? That's where we do everything that we can do and then we have utter faith that God can do the rest. Yes, yeah. So we, it's, and to me it's about, um, it's about, you know, God's given us this gift of will hasn't he? And so when we, when we want to use that will in harmony with love, then we've gotten the biggest lesson that he wants to teach us and he can act with us, you know? Until, and and the, this beautiful, uh, the way that it's explained, you know, Mahanine says, we didn't get together and have a big sing and go, we can do nothing, 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 you know? <laughs> we're just useless, it's all you, God. You know, we acknowledge that we're the greatest of your creations and what what we do with our will is important and we're going to use it. We're going to give everything we can to this process and, and like you said, have faith that you'll, you'll come to the party. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty beautiful, hey, Laura? It's like that part where they... Um, I can't remember if it's on this page, but where he talks about um, that we're, if we treat God like a servant and we just say, yeah. God, answer this, yeah. do this, do yeah. that, like just yeah. the unlovingness yeah. in there. Absolutely. It, um, it's, it is on that page, uh, towards the bottom of page 90 on, on the printed book. Um, it, just beautiful. He says, um, God is too wise and just, he answered, to require or expect any man to perform an impossibility. But how often do we say, no, it's an impossibility. I can, you know, that's our arrogance, isn't it? But in those things which are well within their capacity, do men work according to that rule of faith which you have seen, with, which you have seen, I think it should be exemplified? Nay, verily, rather forgetting that they are called to the high privilege of being workers together with God. 
as you have seen illustrated, they have been educated into the practice of doing nothing but asking God to do it all. When God works for man, it is always in conjunction with man. It is no canon of divine law that the master shall do all the labour while the servant gives the orders. Pretty powerful, hey? <laughs> it is a big rap, Michael, isn't it? <laughs> the next sentence will say, uh, yeah. When you ask God to lay the cornerstone, you may rest assured that he will wait for you to get the foundations ready. Yeah, yeah. Laura? Um, I just had a little taste for the first time um, about actually um, like I was sitting there feeling God's love and it was just, you know, a dribble but it was like, oh, thank you God, like this is all I can, this is all I can feel right now. But then I said I'd like to feel a little bit more and I could feel a bit more and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, like, I'm actually like Engaged. doing something yep. with God. <laughs> yep. And then I, wrote, I was writing down, I can feel two out of ten. Yep. I said, all right, a little bit more. And I was opening up, I'm like, I can feel a bit more. I'm like, four out of ten. I was getting all excited and I was getting a bit scared too. But I was like, I'm actually having, this is the first time ever I've even thought of, of, of the possibility of us, receive us and play with it and explore it. It got up to eight and I was like, oh, that's enough, that's enough for me. I'm so happy. <laughs> but yeah. you know what? If that was really God, that's just a tiny dribble. Because <laughs> really the truth is when we receive God's love, it's going to be overwhelming every time, yeah. especially when there's so much error already in us. You and know, it was already getting trigger. uncomfortable. And it stayed with me for about three hours and I was actually just feeling like, I always thought love would be like blissful. I'm sure it is at different stages, but because it was just the beginning, it's like that. It, I felt like saying, that's enough. Like I just felt this like, oh, wow, it's tingling and it feels a bit weird and it's hot and I'm getting a bit rushy. And yeah. so all this dynamic was happening, but I was just sitting in, I wasn't talking to anyone, doing anything. I was actually just sitting there and feeling yeah. how often I'd be loving my partner and then, or, you know, engaged in this beautiful love and then go, okay, so what do you want for dinner now? Like, or I'd just cut it off, like, that's enough now. Yeah. We've just gone through this intimate loving process, but time, like, it's now get back to the world or get back to... So the resistance to love, to yeah. And to staying in it and allowing that whole desire of the whole love to go through what it needs to go through. Yeah. yeah. Just also, Laura, I would be praying a lot about asking your guides to just make sure that when you are... Like, just to help you to discern between spirit uh, interactions and actual relationship with God because sometimes when we ask for love sometimes our spirit friends give us some love uh, and sometimes spirits in addictive places can give us love but just be aware that when we do receive God's love it is inevitably overwhelming and so if you're if you're um, kind of able to receive it and almost um, not be completely emotionally involved I think it's actually a spirit having like having an interaction with you because when you receive God's love the conditions of our soul are is that we have to be completely open emotionally and during that exchange we we will have emotions triggered you know so it's going to be very overwhelming the only so reason I probably felt that it was is because when I woke up in the morning um that day I cried a lot so mm -hmm. there was an opening but at the time I could feel I knew that I was in fear but it was almost like there is a possibility that this is possible and it sure. was the first time in my life that I've got that possibility and it sure. was a tiny a spark but it was something. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, Dave and then Alexis. Just a, a little question like that because I'm a little unclear on it still. Yeah. But recently I've uh, – and I've realised that I've been blocked actually asking genuinely for God's love. But while I was processing a little bit the other day, um, during the processing, I was actually longing for God's love, and I felt that it took me deeper. Yeah. Not not hugely. Yeah. Um, like I was already emotional, but I didn't feel like I was knocked out with anything else, kind of thing. So, what is the question? I suppose was I really receiving God's love? Like uh, I'm still a little grey on it. Um, and look, I think that when you receive God's love. There won't, it won't be kind of grey. <laughs> it will be overwhelming and it will be... I think um, AJ was talking to Igor the other day and he said, it'll be unlike any experience you've had before. Every time you have it, 
because it'll be more overwhelming each time. It, it will be a greater, greater amount of love each time the more you open up to it and you will feel it. So, but very often, like, I feel like we can, we can invite God to our emotional processing, if that makes sense. We can ask for truth. We can ask for humility. We can ask for all of those things in that process. Um, and we can ask for love. But just don't confuse a little sensation you have with receiving God's love because it's going to be out of this world and it's going to, um, you're not going to, you're going to go, wow, I just felt a heart connection with my creator, even if it was for that just one moment. And, and the level of love you will receive from God, because if you consider it, if we're down here, say in the first sphere, God's up there in you know, this level of love that we can't even conceive. He's created all of the spheres more than we even know about yet, or the possibility for the spheres more than we even know about. Um, when, it, when we touch him, when he touches us, the level of love that he has is going to blow our mind, our heart, it blow us out of the water, you know. Uh, it's going to be that intense. It's not going to be like having a hug with Eloisa and feeling a bit of natural love. Do you know what I mean? It, which is lovely, but it's do, that's just an example. You know, it's going to be very overwhelming yeah, like every a, time. For AJ, every time it's overwhelming. You know, even when you're at one with God, it's overwhelming because even when you're at one with God in terms of His feelings about love, you haven't, you don't have inside of you all of the love that God has. So when God loves you and you are open to that, it's overwhelming. Yeah, like I've, I've been sometimes a little open to the love from my guides, so yeah. God's love's got to be way beyond Out that as well. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Alexis? Yeah, my question's along the same lines. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was a time, well, there was just one time yeah. I felt it, and it felt, you know, like... Like, you know, compared to usually I did a lot of spiritual stuff over the years and usually it's like, oh, wow, I feel all this fuzziness. Yeah. And this was just like, you know, Hulk Hogan's like body slam <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. on the ground, just like lying, yeah. practically can't, well, not yeah. practically, just simply can't do anything, just going like, wow, what was that? Yeah. So that <laughs> felt pretty, you know, like I have a flavor of that just once. Yes. Um, it didn't feel like I did much for it, it just happened. Yeah. But... But often, you know, it catches us by surprise because yeah. we're so in our head going, okay, we've got to get God's love, la, la, la. And sometimes it's just in moments where we just allow ourselves and well, our it humility was. It was, it was, and there's God. And if You we, know, it was just <laughs> when I started listening to AJ, it was like the second yeah. DVD. I'm like, okay, well, you know, like he's saying, it's there like, you know, like, all right, show me, you know. And then it was yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. kablam. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, 20 minutes later or whatever, I don't know what it was. but. Yeah. Um, so my question, though, is while I'm processing, though, I'll feel a different kind of, well, I mean, I called it love. I'm not sure yeah. what to call it, but it's almost like there's a clearing. There's some sort of a, a gentle light layers coming off me, mm -hmm. and it feels like love. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Is that... Um, is that just God's truth coming down or I'm getting a little bit confused yeah. on that. Yeah. Well, and I think the key is that we don't get too intellectual about this whole thing. Yeah. I think you trust your experience. Yeah. Um, and like it is up to each of us to have our own relationship with God. But yeah. I guess I'm pointing out these nuances because you want it to be authentic. Sure. And yeah, as yeah, you yeah. know, there's all this error on the earth and spirits get into the mix yeah. so often. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that when we're processing a number of things, if we're causally processing, a number of things can be happening. Mm -hmm. Firstly, our guides are right there with us, mm -hmm. totally. And often... Um, I'm more open to just feeling their love <laughs> yeah, yeah. when I'm in a humble state than I am to, to God yeah. uh, around a certain emotion. There's also the fact that our soul is actually healing. Mm -hmm. It's actually letting go of something and that so, feels pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. So you we know. could say, oh, suddenly that's God's love, but it's actually, it's just healing. 
yeah, yeah, it can be just the, the lightness we're experiencing by letting go of, yeah, okay. of stuff we've held. Like It's like a tight muscle all our lives and now mm -hmm. we let go of it. It's like, whoa, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm floating, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I don't need to label it. I was just no, trying to get an yeah. understanding of like, well, what is this phenomenon that happens when yeah. you do seemingly let go of certain things, not fully, but just yeah. layers of it. Yeah. Yeah. And Alexis, like, I don't feel like I, I don't receive God's love that often because mm. there's, I'm very, there's so much unworthiness inside of me that I'm resistive around, you know. So right. yeah. predominantly when I f allow myself to receive God's love, I'm just sobbing on the floor because I feel so unworthy. Mm -hmm. And I, I imagine it's the same for a lot of people, you know. We, we're carrying around these horrible definitions of ourselves and when we're mm -hmm. just willing to be humble and let God love us mm -hmm. one of the first emotions that comes up is like oh my gosh it's so beautiful and I don't feel like I deserve it and the yeah. grief of that comes out yeah. so but yeah. um you know I don't feel that qualified to talk about every little nuance because I'm still walking this mm -hmm. myself yeah. yeah okay yeah thank you yeah. no worries Laura I was just going to say that I always thought that it would be like a mind soul blowing experience, and yep. then um, through doing the the way experiment, how it's um, we're talking about how we're longing for God's love every day, and have you felt God's love every day? I thought I've been building it up like this whole experience where I'm going to drop and you know cry. Like I thought it was almost like a false belief that I've created for myself. So I think for me, I'm a bit like, can it? just be gentle drops and then when God's love really enters the soul then it will be transforming but it could there can be different variations of it or is it is or it isn't okay this is my feeling and Sorry. again it's all right I'm going to um I'm going to talk to AJ about this as well it's my second thing I have to remember both things but um this is my pretty firm feeling when we receive God's love at any moment it overwhelms us when we're feeling trickling, warm, fuzzy feelings, it's our spirit guides or it's a spirit in addiction with us. This is what I feel pretty firmly. Um, I feel that we can, we can open ourselves to God and the present, like the presence of God's love in creation by being in nature by observing the potentials in people around us like by witnessing his his creations i suppose and that can open our heart to to almost a longing for god or a more trust of god remember how vanessa was saying in the beginning she feels like god's just going to be like my dad and i realize i'm just don't want that so i'm blocked to him whereas if we we begin to see the truth of what god's created around us it can open our hearts a little and that can feel quite beautiful but i don't think we can mistake that for actually receiving god's love into us which it is my belief that every time that happens it will be emotional now, we might only allow it for like split seconds and that's what I think most people do. We allow it, it's like the bell curve. We just suddenly at the top of this bizarre bell curve and we go, okay, that's enough for me. I, I, and usually because it's triggering so much pain in us as well. So that's my feeling. And, you know, I think perhaps I can talk to the people um, in charge of the way experiment as well about these specific truths because I think it's important it was just the way that it was written it's like god I'm expecting a life-changing event and here it's saying did you experience it today if not why not and I'm like god people experiencing divine love every day and now if you're not exper if you're not getting it you're not longing for it so I think I was just like all right I'm just gonna let go of the whole <laughs> overwhelming experience and just start to feel love in my heart so. yeah well but and don't confuse that with god's love yeah. for you but I think that's a very good question because really what Mahanin is talking about in this chapter is that the whole world's disillusioned. Got, we've given up on visible signs. You know, we don't have faith in them anymore. We're not really humble, which is actually why they can't really happen. But we're basically saying this is the way the world is. And the truth is that he's telling Fred, and I believe it's the truth for us right now here on earth, is that that's only true because we believe it. That's only true because we're not exercising faith. So I think it's a good question to sit down every day and go, did I receive God's love? If not, why not? It's just that for me, probably 
29 days out of 30, I'd be answering no, and that's because I'm not humble to this, that, and this, that, you know. Um, but to me, that's a more worthwhile exercise. And maybe I should say, like, 59 days out of 60, or, you know, a long time can go past before I receive God's love because I know there's a lot of error in me, you know, and it doesn't stop me desiring God, although sometimes it does. That's how much error is in me. I think, no, nah, I can't. It's just, he's just going to be like my parents and I feel completely overwhelmed by their demands. I, I, if I go into my heart, I don't want you today, God, you know. Um, but other days I go, well, no, I'm going to have faith in the beauty that I can see in what God's created in things around me and my own soulmate in you know the potentials I see in other people as well and just stay engaged in this process yeah and not in myself which is the problem that I have yeah (laughs) um uh stay engaged in this process aim for humility humility is the foundation for God's cornerstone isn't it really Aim for humility every day. Aim for humility. Be real when I'm not humble. Know that when I'm truly humble, God will get through to me. And just keep... The problem I think you face and I face is that we can go down this spiral of going, everyone else is doing it, I'm not getting it, this is crap, I must be crap, what's wrong with me, God, you know, and forgetting that, okay, God created me, God created these potentials in my soul, I've got some bad beliefs about myself and some errors that I'm holding on to about myself... If I'm humble, I'll experience them rather than defending them. Yeah. 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 Teresa? If it's rare that we receive God's love, does that mean we're only progressing when we get God's love or do we get God's truth when we release emotions and progress? Good question. What's the answer, everyone? Okay, if you go to the microphone. God's truth opens the soul to love because Uh the only reason we're not receiving God's love is all this untruth and error that's in our soul. Yeah. So Teresa's question is, do we only progress when we receive God's love? Well, I would imagine the answer is no because we need to release... God desires us. Well, this is what I'm intellectually <laughs> believing yeah. now. Yeah. So we've got to let go of what's stopping God into our life. And and as we let go? As we let go. Is then that progress? That is progress, I would imagine. We're, yeah. we're actually yeah. getting closer yeah. and closer to God and we're seeing ourselves, ourselves. more as God sees us, not. And we can be giving era. up false beliefs along the way and that's all progress for our soul. Yeah, we're becoming more real. And we're growing in natural love as well. We can be, yeah, yeah, we can be. Sometimes we're not even doing that yet, but we can be, yeah, healing errors around love, I suppose, when we're willing to receive truth. But even before then, we can just be releasing like false beliefs we have about the way the universe operates, false beliefs we have about just our personal concept of ourselves. All those things are progress. When we stop living in addiction, we've made huge progress because living in addiction actually damages our soul. So there's progress there. Yeah. Uh, Matt? Um, I, I think I, I feel like we can release quite a lot of effect emotions from our soul without receiving God's love and progress, but not. How do we release an effect? By by feeling it fully. And then is it gone from us? The cause of it isn't. So what's going to happen? We still need to release the cause. And won't we rec- recreate an effect? Until we release the cause, yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel that like maybe. Like the less effect is in our soul, maybe it, it, it maybe that causal emotion doesn't dominate our action so much, but I could be way out of harmony. Yeah, um, I don't think that releasing you can't release effects, they just exist and they can't. They you can cry about them, but they're not really gone because they're still an effect. <laughs> um, oh, so it's, uh, yeah, okay, do you it. see what I mean? Yeah, so. We can cry about our blocks 
and maybe that's what you're feeling about. So, for example... So you become more open kind of thing? Yeah. Well, all my blocks are my false beliefs I have about what's going to happen when I experience my causal grief. So there's a lot of fears involved in that. And so one of my fears might be when I fully submit to my grief, I'm going to look like a crazy lady. (laughs) And no one will ever take me seriously again. This is one of my blocks. Uh, I will just be regarded as a completely irrational woman who cannot function at all. Now, that is actually a block that I can release emotionally. I can go through the, ex- the, the emotional experience of feeling like everyone, is going, everyone believes I'm a crazy lady and I'm, you know, it's actually a fear that people are going to be able to harm me when I'm just emotional. Is that not an effect though? No, that's a block. So that's a, a block belief. is different from an effect. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because when, when I release that, it's gone from me and I'm actually freer to get closer to the, mm. the core emotion. But didn't the, the emotional block, which is an emotion, I'm guessing, the block that we have, yeah. get created as a result of a causal emotion inside of us? Um, no. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So that belief that I have about women being regarded as emotional or the, me being totally emotional all of the time, that's a belief that entered me as I was growing up and I watched my parents' attitude towards emotion. My causal grief is about the loss of God and the loss of my soulmate. Now, that, those two things, that block wasn't caused by the loss of my soulmate or the loss of God. It was caused by the environment I grew up in. And so it forms a block to me experiencing my grief. Is that different? Sorry, just if you go to Matt again, sorry. Is that a little bit maybe different for you as a reincarnated soul though because your your causal emotions haven't necessarily come from your childhood experiences? Sorry I'm labouring. No, no, no. no. I think it's very important to labour it so you get it. Um, No. Say, say my causal grief around men was that my dad died when I was five. Yeah. Um, so that would be my causal grief, loss of, loss of yeah. male, the male. There'd be many emotions, but that, say that's one of them. Mm. But say um, I grew up in a family that completely rejected emotion. Now that was there before my dad died. And after my dad died, mm. and it created a block to me experiencing all all grief, all types of grief, because I might ha- I'm going to have many different grief, causal griefs inside of me. Yeah. So, but we can say that the block to me fully releasing the one of the blocks to mm. me fully releasing the loss of my dad, the grief I felt at the loss of my father, was the fa- is the fact that outright grief is regarded as weak and pointless in my family yeah yeah i guess i'm just feeling like wouldn't that belief have come from some causal emotion somewhere inside of your soul though Uh, i think no it it is an emotion in itself it's an injury that's inside of me if i can tell you what an effect is sure an effect would be if then we were in a relationship and we broke up and i just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried for months that Matt doesn't love me anymore. Now that's an effect emotion and I can cry and cry and cry about that forever Mm. Uh, and it's not going to change anything because my causal grief is that my dad died when I was five. Do you see the difference? And and just to add to that example... Just, sorry, if we... (laughs) Um... I can see how, like, the effect is kind of, like... It's actually the same emotion that the causal emotion is. Um, Except that I can never release it. It's not the truth. It's not, yeah, I'm not releasing it. I'm just like a broken record. Because the real pain is the fact that That dad died. That dad died. Yeah. 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 And that's different from a block. Yeah. Very different from a block because like a block is like a block to the emotion, but it's. Yep. And it's a false belief. It's a false belief and it's usually a fear. So if you think about it, the block is. Um, my fear is you're all going to laugh at me 
when I experience my grief or you're all not going to take me seriously when I'm just a blubbering mess all the time. Mm. So that's a false belief inside of me. Now it's true mm. <laughs> when I go into that emotion, I might go back to a causal emotion where sometime in my childhood I was very emotional, might have been before my dad died mm. and everyone laughed at me or no one took me seriously. Now that, if I went into that emotion and I would have to release it causally, my block would be gone. Yeah. But usually that is a lesser feeling of grief than this core emotion that I'm avoiding. And all okay. of it forms like a framework of things that I have to work through in order to get to this huge big grief inside of me. I understand the thing. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I hope that it makes sense. I'll yeah. pray about it as yeah, well, yeah. just to really yeah. get yeah. in with some sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope, I, Vanessa, sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. no, no, that's okay. I, I was just going to say, for me, I've found blocks of what I prefer to feel. So, yes, it's a belief, but, but it's like, well, I can sort of handle that belief. I can't handle feeling like my actual father never loved me. Re yeah. Regardless of whether or not he was capable is irrelevant. Yeah. But I'd rather feel that that, that relationship that I've had, my marriage breaking up or whatever... I'd rather cry about that yeah. than, than feel Which how is actually an effect. So then you're cry it's not a block, it's an effect. Oh, okay. But you could say, and I, the reason I just feel like we're getting a bit intellectual, but that's all right. It's good for me to really get down to what the hell this means. It can be that if I feel my father didn't love me, that might be my causal grief. But a belief I might prefer is that I'm just an unlovable woman. I'm just difficult. I'm yeah. difficult. It's all my fault, all of these things. Now, often people cry about that and they cry 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 and they cry. Nothing happens because always where we get to causal emotion, there's the presence of the truth of what happened. And the truth of what happened is I was created lovable and I wasn't loved and it hurt. And, and when we grieve that and often... If you think about your own processing, we're far more comfortable to grieve about how oh, I'm not lovable to actually feel I was lovable and I wasn't loved. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Here you go on. I just wanted to uh, comment. Like, it, it amazes me to this day. If you, if, for example, when an act, unloving act was happened in your childhood, if any of the emotional experience was shut down at that moment or it wasn't fully allowed, it just carries on uh, to the rest of your life and brings, uh, you know, a loving husband, yeah. know, wife. Yeah. And it's just that, you know, <laughs> five minutes of that emotional grief that was shut down by exactly. someone else. And you know how funny is it? Because so much layers of fear and we don't, we don't ever address that emotion. We spend our life trying to avoid that emotion. So the fear builds and the fear builds. And often when we finally get through all the blocks and the layers, this is why I say you can be progressing as you're getting through all the blocks and the layers. Because finally, sometimes you do just have to cry for five minutes and your whole life changes. About the right thing, yeah. <laughs> and you know what it tells me? is the power of the soul that God created. Yeah. How powerful is this soul that if I just hold on to this little splinter, it's that big, like that's how powerful my soul is. It's going to affect everything around me. Yeah. And the desire thing, like if you're shutting down your desire, that's it, you know. You can't go against your soul. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Pretty awesome creation. Imagine it in harmony with love. Like, what are we all going to be able to do? Amazing. Yeah. All right, guys. Do you mind if we just round out the chapter? Because I think we've nearly covered everything, and that way we kind of get a bit of completion. It just means going a bit longer today. So, all right. I'm so engrossed, my book is even upside down. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. What haven't we covered, do you think? I just... Yeah, okay. So just to the last few pages of the chapter. Um, yeah, at the bottom of... Well, here we are again at this... Um, do, have we covered this example, you know, about when we pray for God's assistance and something comes along? Mining gives this amazing example. He says, 
you know, suppose people prayed for, you know, 10,000 pounds to relieve the distress of, of someone starving or something in the community. And then a local businessman gets $10,000 and goes, oh, I'm really good. And then he thinks, oh, what about those poor people? I'll give them 20 pounds. And, um, yeah, and he says, you know, doesn't that just cheat God and cheat the people that he he'd granted the, the gift to? Uh, and then he says, suppose it happened directly. And there, there again was that... Um, the truth that he was saying that God is he can't do this because there's so many erroneous ideas upon the planet Uh, and if we just opened up in faith he could act more directly what do you think though could if if we had more faith in um in the first instance do you think God could act more directly as well if if someone was very humble with what they were suddenly they came into ten thousand pounds do you think God would be able to act more in that way, if we were more willing to um, acknowledge his gifts. Joy, if we go to Joy. Oh, Cavill, did you have your hand up? No. no. Um, I think it would require us taking on the belief that all good gifts come from God, mm-hmm. for a start, and being God-reliant and recognising that. Whereas, and I've done this my whole life, being in self-reliance, you think, oh, aren't I great? Look what I've done. Yeah. So the opposite would, would only be true if... Um, if I had that belief that all the good gifts do come from God and recognise it as that. And I already had the desire and was willing to um, to use my free, free will in that way. So if I, we talked about this this morning, I think. Um, don't you love the meetings before the book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that if, if a gift came through like that and, and, and my first thought was, oh, what a great gift from God. What yeah. can I do to do God's yeah. work? Yes. You know, it would require that mindset. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yes, I God could so. work. Yeah. But that is still God working with man because yes. I have the desire and the exactly. will to, As do, Matt to do God's work. I said, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Did, we, did we eventually clarify who this all good things come no. from God? I just re- re- realised we went, woo, all out there. We never actually got to that. <laughs> what was the answer? Joy, can you answer? What does it mean when we say all good gifts come from God? Um, I believe now that all good gifts do come from God. Um, How? How, How do they what do? does that mean? Okay, what, what it means is that, um, a little bit like this example, I guess, that man needs to have that belief but also have the desire to do God's work on earth so okay. that God can work with us. Yes, I just think, yes, let's go right back. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> back to my Hanin statement. When God works for man, it is always in conjunction with man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it, there is a truth that all good gifts come from God, even without man. You like, look at the gifts already around us. We haven't even used our will. Where do they come from? Trees grow, Trees grow grass grows, birds fly. Um, you know, all kind, the sun sets, the sun rises, the rain falls. Where does that come from? I'm just wondering, thinking about it, um, isn't any gift will come from God because the all-powerful being, if he didn't want us to have something, we wouldn't have it. So everything comes from God. Yeah, but even back, okay, we know that God did the rain and the snow and the trees and the birds. What about the soul? Who did that? God. God. So every potential that is within us has come from God, hasn't it? Yeah, like, that's all right. That's all right. That's, it's, a, it's easy when I'm sitting here knowing exactly where I want to go and you're all like, oh. but, yeah, yeah. But if you look at it that way, everything good that exists, if, if God, God only creates beautiful things in harmony with love, every good thing, even that comes from me, my potential to do that has only been placed in me by my creator. So all good things come from God. Yeah. Yeah, in that sense. But my name's trying to get Fred to think about now. Hang on, God's. How can God really act on the on the earth? Yes, we can acknowledge the Creator, but He did give us our own will, and that's a gift from Him. So that if I use my will in harmony with with love and with God's will, then you know that potential was given to me by God. But it is my will. My name's saying it can happen even more directly. You can ask for God. And he'll, 
he'll do so. Or, you know, you can ask for inspiration and prophecy from God and he will grant it if you're in harmony with his love and laws. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Matt and then Laura. Um, I actually had this experience where um, I was busking and then I'd stopped busking and I was talking to some friends and the insect kicks me in the face and I finally go into this emotion and go live through or we'll have the, the feelings of um, being sexually abused when I was little. Yeah. And, um, and just allowed myself to experience it. Somewhere inside of me I was aware that like this was like an hour and a half of of or whatever, however long it was that I wasn't busking as well. Yeah. And so I was as like as I was kind of coming kind of close to the 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 finish of it, I was kind of longing a little bit to God yeah. about about um like and at the beginning as well, like, oh it doesn't matter. I know I need to do some busking so then I can have some money to eat and stuff like that. And So I'd you're busking while you're having the emotions? Is no, that no, I happened? stopped. Oh, okay, I stopped yeah, busking yeah, and yeah, just yeah, had yeah, the emotions yeah, cool. and stuff yeah. like that. And yeah. I feel like I've received some of God's love in that process. Yeah. And um then afterwards I stopped and, and got up and, and I went to walk and there's ten dollars sitting there, actually, or twenty dollars or whatever it was. And it was wow. like this beautiful like like this direct gift somehow from God that Here's this miracle of this money that I would have earned when I was busking and God's like still yeah. giving me these beautiful yeah. gifts and it was just yeah. this, wow, like incredible yeah. kind of thing that came from God in yeah. like a sort of a bizarre way. Yeah, and it is it is a real truth that when we act in harmony with God's laws, he can act so much more in our life through yeah. many different means, you know, through our mm. guides, through... It, like many different things he can have an impact on. And AJ and I often find that when we're really busy, you know, and like doing a lot of things and just forgetting about our own personal comfort and um, and welfare, that often, you know, we receive less donations, even though we're doing far more things, there's less less donations, we, we have a harder time like... Um, mm making ends meet, if, if you like to use that term, and, and more people keep asking for things. And as soon as we go, we need to look after ourselves, we're going to do this or we're going to cancel that or we're just going to look after ourselves, often then we, we have more donations than when we did five times the amount of things and people are, are far more respectful of, of our space and all. it's because we went, hang on, God desires that we love ourselves, we'll act in harmony with that yes. and then everything else kind of works with us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm experiencing that. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Hey? It's Slowly. like it goes against all the logic that, that gets put that into us. Like the, the, the illogic. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> we call logic. Yeah. yeah, that we call logic on yeah. earth. Yeah. And then it's like we, we – I, I find like for myself every time I take a risk that's loving Yeah. Um, and really does confront some fear, there's always these beautiful gifts that God just goes blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like yeah. Here you go, here you go. And it's – and it's amazing. I feel that's the biggest pathway that truth enters our soul is when we take a risk for love, when we yeah. decide not to listen to fear and we do the opposite of fear, mm. then it's like that I feel that's the only time God can give us a new truth is through the experience of that. Um, otherwise, it's just sitting in our head. Mm. Oh, fear's not real. I don't really need to be afraid of that. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. But in our soul, we really feel that. And then when we act in opposition to that fear or we don't listen to the fear, then, then we have this whole other experience where it just feels like, blah, blah, blah. oh, wow, that wasn't true. <laughs> and I know it now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Where were we? Um, last page, page 91. The responsibility, Pamela said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what, what, what did you guys feel about what, what's my name trying to teach Fred here? Uh, I kind of paraphrased it down. I don't actually have the book in front of me. Um, and it, I feel like it's maybe a bit from my guide as well. Um, the record of our life must show that our love to God has been manifested by our love and devotion to man mm -hmm. before we'll actually be able, like, be eligible or have the power to enter into that rest. Yeah. Beyond. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There's a bit that he says before that as well. Vanessa? Before that, he says, um, every person is held responsible for the full and right use of the intelligence which he is endowed. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, with gifts come responsibility. Mm -hmm. So 
here we are sitting in our first world condition and all this yeah. comfort and yeah. all these amazing gifts that we've been given and at the end of our life as we pass there'll be an account yeah. for what we did with those gifts with those and gifts. how we used them. Yeah. Why do you think it is that with gifts there comes responsibility? What Does that feel fair? Why does it happen like that? What Where's the love in that? Uh, yep, yeah, Catherine? Well, we're all given gift, di different gifts from God. Yeah. And I assume that we're all meant to use those gifts. But not all of us have the, the same ability to use those gifts. What so, limits our ability, do you think? Um, well, sometimes it could be the amount of love that we, we have or what happens when we were children and the way we were brought up and things like that. Yeah. Uh, other times we are too frightened to use the gifts we're given. Yeah. Um, and is that a real limitation on how we can use the gifts? No, we've got to get rid of the, get rid of the fear. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, if you yeah. go to Vanessa's example, like someone born in Ethiopia compared to someone yes. born in Australia, what are the different limits that might be? Where do they come from? Well, it's a it's a different way. Um, we we have um, the ability to be educated. Uh, in Ethiopia, they probably haven't. We've got the ability to have running water and, and food and everything yep. like that, whereas over there they haven't. Why? If we because go to Eloise, yeah. Is it the, the restrictions that are placed on people by others, like the oppressions that are put on, upon you? Because they still have gifts and often in third world, like often people with less use their gifts more, the gifts yes. from God more. Yes. Um, and they might not have the material gifts. Yes. But we look at, like, gifts sometimes, I reckon, in a bit of a weird, erroneous way. Complacently? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like... like. So given that, why do you think they use their gifts where we don't often? Vanessa? Because we're just too busy asking for more, <laughs> quite often. You know, yeah. it's particularly where I'm coming from. Yeah. And, and I did come from some of that um, socialistic, angry space at yeah. some stage. Yeah. Yeah. But because we're, yeah, we're so busy not honouring the fully engaging the gifts that we have and not honouring them. Well, whereas... And remember Fred at the beginning of this chapter, how did he receive the gift? He fully allowed the process. He was humble, yeah, wasn't humble. he? Yeah. He didn't have an expectation or demand that Mahaneen talked to him. He was like, I've got an audacious hope, you know, that it might happen. So there's that thing. There's no entitlement in him. And so he receives a gift and he can, he can see a gift. When we have these horrible addictions that we, so many of us have in the West of entitlement, expectation, I should have space, I should have comfort, I should have all these things, We'd, our life is littered with gifts and we don't even see them. Yeah. Laura? Sometimes in, um, in those third world countries, they, they have to bring out the very thing that's going to be of benefit to all as well. So they're thinking on, you know, more universally and more for the community or whatever. So in aiding all of us are gifts that will be beneficial for all of us, or for, for everyone. For everyone. Whereas because of that sense of entitlement, it's like, you know, fame, fortune, what am I going to get out of it? How's it going to support me? So it limits the capacity of the true gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so why does God make us responsible for what we do with gifts then? I just had an idea of the responsibility, like I have a feeling of like how it's bad, but actually maybe a responsibility is not a bad thing because yeah. if you're responsible for your gift, there's a joy with that. Uh, like I don't know where it's coming from or why I'm going to say it, but it's a bit like responsibility could be really cool because you could be like, wow, like this is awesome. And it's not – how do I – like – Responsibly feels loaded. In it's loaded sense. in our society, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You must be responsible. You're responsible for that. What, yeah. You know, there's a lot of fear, isn't there? Yeah. In Where the actually, maybe in its true sense, as God intended it, all He's really saying is, "I've given you this beautiful gift. Now it's up to you to just give that gift freely." Yeah. And that is all the responsibility it is, which is not really a responsibility. It's more just, well, I don't know, but. 
yeah. like I'm getting yeah. caught up in the word. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a gift. But why does he? Why would he have an account then when we pass? Given what Eloisa just said, which was lovely, joy. <clears throat> It comes back to something that we mentioned earlier and that that God doesn't expect any of us to do the impossible but will judge us as to whether we've done what we can. Yeah. And that's the only real measure. Yeah. Have we done what we can and that would be according to our gifts. And And, and when you say judge us, what do you mean? Um, That we will will be held to account Mm -hmm. for what we've... for having done what we have done. Yeah. And the only real... The criteria for that is, have we done all that we could? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Alexis. There's a little bit more I want to tease out of this. Um, I think it has to do with um, the, the, the process that God gives us gifts to grow. And he has this vision, you know, like AJ said, a soul one with God is like a nuclear explosion. He wants to make sure that, you know, we, you ain't going to screw up the whole universe in the process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know why would he? Why would if we think about if we can let go of God as this punishing entity that we often relate him to be? If we think of him as a loving, guiding teacher or father or mother, why would he say every man is held responsible for the full and right use of his intelligence and gifts? Matt, well, God wants us to be happy. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like if we actually use our gif- gifts out of harmony with love, it's not going to bring us any happiness. No. And if there's no account and there's no like compensation or whatever other things afterwards, we're never going to learn to do it lovingly. Yeah. And we're never going to be happy as a result. Yeah. We don't learn about love, do we? It's like if you, you know, the analogy AJ says, you know, if you give the child a toy and it just smashes it, then you're not going to give more gifts and you're going to try. You, if you love the child, you'd want to help them understand what's just happened and why and why it's out of harmony with love yeah yeah okay uh laura uh, there's two mics on the go actually so yeah i was gonna say likening it to um to a loving parent it's like with my child like she sets the table but then when it comes to, to um when she can't reach something then i'll reach that thing but if she can reach the fork and she can sit, so she does her, she does what she can of it and then yeah. But I, I don't say don't set the table because there's things that you can't reach. Like yeah. she has to contribute, and then, yeah. and that's her, that's her responsibility, and that makes her appreciate when things are done for her. So. Yeah, and you're teaching her a lot, aren't you, about how her will, her capability, um, how she can learn and engage. And she look says after the best herself. thing about getting older is I can put the fire on and mow the lawn. <laughs> she gets really excited about yeah. doing these things. Awesome, so. awesome, lovely. All right, uh, Igor had his hand up, and Joy. It just feels to me that God has got so much in store for us. He just wants us to learn to do with the gifts that he gave us already. Exactly. To give us the good stuff, you know. If, imagine if this is like the baby gifts we get. What's it going to be like when we get the, the big ticket stuff? It's going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we go to Joy. Um, I think maybe it's because... Um, my love for God is going to be demonstrated by my love for man. Like. Okay, yes. Yes and no. Why? We just need to be careful about what does he actually say here on page 92? What's spiritual maturity? That's, says, um, the record of your life must show that your love to God has been manifested by your love and devotion to man. Before you'll have the right or power to enter. So does that mean that if I just wander around loving and being devoted to all of you, that I have a relationship with God? Not necessarily. I think it requires both. And earlier on on the page, he says, spiritual manhood can only be attained by work which is alike honouring to God and and beneficial to your fellow man. So it needs to be both. Yeah. And that that religion alone, so that method of living alone is what is what god actually says he hath done what he could yeah yeah so So, honoring god and loving my fellow man and if you think about it when we honor god and have a relationship with god the natural result is that you would honor each other yeah 
Yeah, I've got a question about that. Back in the earlier part, because it, t it took me six reads to get past page two. Yeah. You know, about yeah. The, um, my brother. Yeah. And um, I'm just tearing up again. It's like I said to Matt, um, I want to live in a world like that. You know, what would it take for me to be like that? Yeah. And um, with all of my injuries and judgments and, and so on, like... If I made a decision that I wanted to be that open and that loving to my brother and sister equally yeah. and treat them that way, um, we had a discussion about how that would look. I said, well, would that just look like a facade or, or would it, as Matt suggested, just bring up the emotions that need to be, that need to be cleared to make it? Mm -hmm. More pure. If you think about Fred's exchange with my Hanine, my Hanine, sorry, my Hanine, if I'm saying it wrong, um, that could, that experience couldn't have happened if he was in a facade, could it? No. Because it, it was a heart-based interaction, wasn't it? Mm. So, the the answer to your question, though, I think, is just one little word: humility. Right. Because the, the I think the measure of my regard for any of you is just a measure of my humility. I don't have to be perfect in order mm. to love you. I just have to be humble. Mm. And through that process, of course, I'll become perfect. Okay. But, yeah, I feel that often, myself included, we make excuses for not loving when, in fact, we have the capacity within us if we're only willing to be humble. And if you think about your interactions with each other, if, if you think about times when you're really humble, the level of regard and love you can have for another person is, is exponentially greater than on the day when you're just holding on to your stuff and you feel slighted or, you know, that person's not loving me, they never love me, wish they'd deal with their stuff, you know, all of those things. <laughs> that then, you know, then we, we don't, we're not loving anyone in those days. But if you think about it when you're really humble... There's a lot of capacity for love within us. And if you look in the world around us, there are people displaying love towards others, aren't there? In many different ways, you know. And um, it's, it's too easy to get complacent, I think. And, and that's what Mahaneen is really giving us a message about, isn't it? Is, he's saying, When one declares his belief in an unchangeable God who will reward every man according to the deeds done in the body... He's expected to order his conduct according to that rule. What does that mean in our lives if you think about what we believe? Um, with the truths that we're learning, it's all very well for us. To, it's a little bit like spirituality talk, the pseudo, you know, pseudo. pseudo spirituality. Yeah. Because it's all very well to hear about these things and to go, yeah, oh, great, I'm going to grow in love or whatever. But if I don't act, in that and actually look at my, uh, not even act, a little bit I suppose like the desire, just look at myself and go, whoa, okay, this be place. Be real. Yeah, yeah, be real with myself rather than the facade. Well, I'm not actually honouring um, what I've learnt. I'm yeah. not, I don't, I don't believe that God is a beautiful God yeah. in that moment. Yeah. So I'm either being a total fraud and going, oh great, love truth, whatever, when actually I'm going, nah, hate this. Yeah. If it. Yeah. Um, or I'm, you know, I've got to make a decision somewhere there, I think. Yeah. It's sort of like the discussion that we were having last night, isn't it? Where yeah. you and I carry around this belief we're rotten people and and yet I believe in a God that only creates beautiful things. Yeah. How does that work? It doesn't. You know, wh where is God actually going to call me into account when I come through the mist, when he goes, now you've been wandering around telling everyone you, there's God only creates beautiful things and they're beautiful and there's potential for growth and change. And then, you know, for years and years you've held on to this belief that that counts for everyone else but actually you're rotten, you know. Yeah. It's really hypocritical. That's yeah. how I kind of feel about yeah. it, you know. It's yeah. like, yeah, projecting all the stuff that's, yeah, I just get real really. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, like this to me is the... It, I think, as I said last night as well, is the essence of humility. It's, it's actually when we're willing to say, I don't know the truth about me, God does, and I'm willing to learn it from him. And, and that's what I see AJ reflecting. Oh, Alexis. <laughs> A lot in his own growth. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is this hitting a nerve, this discussion, oh, yeah. or is it boring? Or <laughs> Right. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I look at that paragraph a lot in terms of myself and I think, okay, there's a lot of things that he's saying there. He's saying when you say you believe in something and you act in disharmony with that, what's going on? God's seeing you. But then he's also saying that if we just... Um, if we just have a belief that God's all wonderful and it's all wonderful and we only have to believe in him and everything's okay and then we never act in our lives to, in terms of love towards our brothers and sisters, there's hypocrisy there as well. Yeah. So there's a lot more that I feel I need to feel about that as well because I feel there's a lot of depth of meaning in there. Yeah. Mm. Karina? I've got a question twice in this chapter. It talks about the unchangeable God. Yes. And somebody brought up their question recently um, that maybe God might be have been created infinitely and might continue on infinitely and maybe God's growing as we're growing. So I just had a question there. What's the question? Um, well, if God is God growing, in, is God uh, why is he an unchangeable God? So what do you think Mahani is trying to say by calling God unchangeable? I think he's trying to say that God won't let us down in that God will always be loving, always give us these gifts, always be over generous and amazing and merciful and all of that. I think that's what he's really saying. Yeah, I think that's what he's really saying as well. He's saying that God doesn't change, he doesn't get moody. He doesn't say, oh, I've yeah. had it with this lot on earth. You know, uh, he, he loves us abundantly all the time and that hasn't changed. And he's also making the point that he's talking about the church and the hypocrisy in the church that at the, you know, when Jesus was first here on earth, he... He healed, there was mediumship, there was signs from God, there was all these things. And then the church went, right, that bit of what God does is over and this is how it's going to be from now on. Mm -hmm. And my name's saying, no, God's unchangeable. What was mm -hmm. possible then is possible mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think... Yeah, I think that's what it means in the in the text. It could be that God is continuing to grow, but if you think about it, once we attain perfection in love, we're never going to grow to not to not love. So God's going to be unchangeable, and the love that He gives us can only increase. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matt, then Laura. Um, I was just feeling like in response to what Karina, Karina was asking that like here not really yeah. here I guess yeah. um that God like the things that are in God yeah God changes but it's like those things never go away they just become more like more is added on to God maybe and yeah. yeah I guess we like I guess we can't know because you know we're not at one with God but that's what it feels like you know I and I know from my own lived experience mm -hmm. that when you reach at one with God, the only way you can, like, you can never lose that place. And so it makes sense that God can't lose his love. Like, he wouldn't have built my soul that way if his soul operated any yeah. differently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, if, if we go to, sorry, Laura and then Pamela. Yeah. I was just reflecting on, actually, that comment that you made and I thought it's interesting because it's like the, I, I don't know if I have it, but it, there could be that real, like there was once upon a time, like the Garden of Eden, and then when the Bible and all these, even going, you know, in the all the ancients, like God was wanting to be engaged with us, and then He's given up on us. Like you guys are boring, you're not getting it. Like this <laughs> yeah. disinterest in us, yeah. And He's pulled away from from that, and yeah. just left us to our own devices because we're just ruining everything anyway doesn't make sense so, does it yeah but that's like that unchangeable of like now i look and i go yeah like i can see how that that could yeah. feel like that yeah. yeah and but really you can see can't you that well i can see that we're just imposing so much on god that he's going i want to be so involved with you guys but you you know you're all hung up on your parents and i can't you know i can't get through anymore i used to be able to also because the church has affected society on the planet so much hasn't it and said that's wrong it's of the devil be afraid and even people who haven't gone to church for 10 or 15 years can freak out when we do spirit mediumship because 
you know, isn't this of the devil? And so there's a lot of ongoing so the control. heaviness is, is yeah. progressing and, yeah. and even the heaviness of the spirits that are, that are covering the earth is, yeah. is growing in number, of course, as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pamela? Yeah, a while back I had a revelation that helped me change a church belief and it was I heard that my, uh, uh, she created us um, to experience this physicality with us as her children and you'd like a playground. Um, and um, so uh, the revelation was that she sort of actually requires us to develop our capacity to communicate with her so that in a way is that blasphemous but so she could experience the physicality and all the creativity that I'm she not going to say it's blasphemous Pamela <laughs> what a heavy word <laughs> <laughs> but I don't agree with the belief no. I don't think God created us because she's needy oh no not needy but creative no but can you no? see that in your description that's yeah. actually saying that God needs us to have more of herself God created this yeah. physical existence for us so that she could experience it. And that is, that is not a loving parent. Many parents become parents because they do feel needy that they want to experience something through their children, but that is not love. God would never create us for any other reason than just to love us. Um, it's a belief that I've heard before, and I think it is probably become a parent on the earth because so many parents have this injury with their children and so we can relate it to God easily or, or you know, when we leave the church and we're looking for other answers, it becomes more uh, open to us. But I feel that God isn't looking for new experience in a needy way through us. God cherishes her relationship with all of us and it's unique, like, she acknowledges that each of us is unique, but she didn't create us so that she could experience more. Oh, I didn't actually think about it in terms of being needy. Uh, that wasn't, yeah, but that's interesting. But can you see yeah, now I can that see it is, why I it is actually that, yeah. a, a yeah, yes, God would be needy if she had have done okay, that. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. Vanessa, we should, uh, how's our time, Teresa? Oops, oops. Oops. Um, just in that chapter two, going back a little bit. Yep. So it struck me how much it was talking about mediumship as well it and was. how it's possible for everyone. And yeah. not only possible, but, but God wants this kind of communication. So yeah. for me, that was really affirming. And yeah. I, you probably don't have time to comment on it, but anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. It was a big theme in the chapter, talking about prophecy and, um, and, and perhaps... Um, I think that it's talking about really just dis receiving direct inspiration from God through feelings of, of truth, of things that will happen, of all of these things. And Mahanin is actually saying these things can happen, but you guys are blocking it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're talking about it also encompasses inspiration when we're creating or yeah. if it's art or building or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah okay. that we could receive yeah. truth okay. and, and also foreknowledge of what will happen in the future if you think about the bible there were many prophets in the bible who were actually inspired by god because there weren't spirits in a good enough condition like in at one condition before but they prophesied about a messiah who would you know show and and they were actually having some connection with god they weren't at one with god yet but obviously there was the conditions okay in their soul enough for that to happen um, and I think Mahanin's trying to say to us, this can happen again. Yeah. Hmm. M Matt, I love it. You guys are so enthusiastic today. It's so yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to address something because I felt like you might have agreed to an untruth. Yes, go ahead. Um, at the end of something that you said, Laura, I think you might have tacked on um, and that the, that the um, spirit world environment around the earth is getting darker oh good save because i clocked that and i and i didn't address it yeah 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 i just i actually feel like i've got this suspicion that there's actually kind of a bit of a revolution happening in the spirit world around the earth at the moment. well it's interesting and i i, I could have talked about it m more because i could put the question to you do you think it's getting darker or lighter yeah it's getting lighter i feel i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah 
To be honest, what I feel is yeah. that it hangs in the balance right now. That's really what I feel. It really depends on good mediums deciding to be good people and assisting. It depends on our own progress, myself, mm. AJ, you, you know, everyone. Yeah. It depends on our, our progress in our relationship with God. If you think about that, if we all develop that, that alters the reality for the spirit world. If we sit on it, if we, if we know these truths and don't act in faith towards them, um, if I decide to give everything up or, you know, if we don't use that, if we continue in addiction with our mediumship, then I think things, will, things have been getting darker and they can continue to get darker. So... Mm -hmm. If we don't take responsibility for our gifts, yeah, yeah. What do you feel, Matt? Um, I, I guess I, I kind of feel like um, there's been so many occurrences now of like a million people at a time or something like that. Oh, let's experiment with is God real or something like that. So I feel like there's definitely some changes happening yeah. in the spirit world, maybe yeah. at a, to, a, to a degree that probably I don't know. Yeah. Might not have happened yeah. very often before in the yeah. history of and look, kind. Uh, you're a medium, so go with your feeling on that, you know. Yeah. I feel there's yeah. def since AJ reincarnated, I feel there's yeah. definitely been big changes in the spirit world. And yeah. I know our celestial friends are working overtime to bring spirits to understand truth and all of those things. Yeah. But and perhaps it's coming from some of my own sadness about the the harshness I do see perpetuated on the earth. I, I feel it's like a real balance, you know, and this, this time in history is a point where there's the potential for us all to, like, lift the lid off and really grow and people who've been in bad condition for thousands upon thousands of years to grow. Yeah. But I do feel this is where God's gift of will comes into play and I, yeah. I relate that to all yeah. of us, like me, yeah. <laughs> everyone, yeah. I feel like um, something I've has kind of come up recently for me um, is in the in those of us who have the privilege at the moment to be close to you guys, um, really looking at what's our desire for everyone else and the whole of God's creation to have that opportunity as well, rather than mm. wanting to hoard it and be like hold it in, yeah, yeah. or live in six weeks, in. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, yeah, yeah, and live in fear. Hey, it's about yeah. what do we do with the gifts that we've been given, and yeah. um, you know, I often used to say to AJ in the beginning, if if it wasn't for who we were, I'd be telling everyone I know this truth because my fear is really just about ostracism. I believe this truth to the core, you know, yeah. I believe it can change everyone's life. Um, but I'm just going to be living in my fear of how other people are going to treat us and that will prevent me giving this huge gift to everyone else. And eventually it took me about four years to get, <laughs> to re you know, really look at that truth inside of myself and go, well, wow, what's, what am I doing with the gifts I've been given? How much am I living in fear and respecting fear as the, my authority? And, you know, what, what would I be doing if fear wasn't, present okay maybe i should start doing that yeah, yeah. And, and it's kind of like look what's already happened within the community i will just with the book group from that from you doing that it's pretty awesome well i don't know i hope it's something <laughs> <laughs> i'm still finding it hard to to recognize my own gifts matt but yeah thank you for that yeah um joy <laughs> yep. um just a reflection on um on Fred, actually, because yeah. I remember thinking um, in some of the earlier chapters, because he is so open to truth and learning, that I thought, oh, he doesn't have any fear. He doesn't have the fear that I have anyway. And then this chapter again reminded me that um, when we were talking about the desire and the bell curve and the things yeah. that we do with it, he doesn't show any fear there either. But is it that he doesn't fear well, or is question. it that he is humble to fear? Ah, okay. So that was my question. It's because easy I, to think that a person who is humble to fear is fearless. Okay. When in fact they're just humble to the experience. They never let it put a roadblock in their way. Right. Do you see the I do difference? see the difference. Yeah. It's a really important point. It is. Because yeah. then even the very last line I think of the chapter is about he still sees the door ajar. He still wants this opportunity to yeah. go back to earth yeah. because if he, he feels that if he just if he can just tell this truth to people that they'll all change. Yeah, yeah, and it's Isn't wonderful he that he has that yeah. that hope. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, Karina and then Dave. And we, we should finish soon. Yeah. Uh, I was just um, seeing another aspect to the door of hope ajar when you were talking about this things hold, hang in the balance, perhaps, and that for myself anyway, this chapter has changed my life because it's clarified so much about how our culture believes and sees God yeah. and the potential for God yeah. and and how the reality is that when we work together with God, Yep. Miracles occur. Yeah. 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 I feel so grateful to Fred that he, his desire that he's, you know, that this hope that he's holding with the door ajar has led him to, to gift this story, which the last two chapters are just a, like a testament to the power of God when we have faith. And um, that is so moving and motivational for me, yeah. And if you think about how patient must they have been, okay, he channeled this stuff over 100 years ago and I don't know how many people read it then, (laughs) you know, uh, maybe quite a few, but it's certainly not gone, it went out of print. It's not gone down in the history books as a big uh, testament to truth and yet, Now, there are a few people reading it, you know. There's people on other sides of the world reading it and, you know, there's a good group of you reading it and engaging. And I think how many of us are willing to ride the bell curve of desire that much? Fred, from the moment he entered the spirit world, which was, what, early 1900s, I think, uh, late 1800s maybe, to by the time he got to a point where he could come back and channel in the early 1900s. So from that, from the late 1800s, he entered the spirit world with a desire. As soon as he passed through the mists, he wanted to come back and let people know the truth, you know. And then he, he eventually got to a point where he could come and channel. And he told all this to Robert James Lees, who wrote it down and it got published. We don't know what a big impact it had. But then he waited another 100 years for, for more people to really be open to the truth. And so that's, that's really... You know, he's let go of a lot in that desire, hasn't he? He's just gifting, gifting, gifting. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. I don't have a full handle on this, but just, just feeling about it and, and you saying that you feel perhaps things in the spirit world hang in the balance. So if in some way I'm not taking responsibility for my gifts and for following my desires and perhaps as a medium being loving towards spirits in opportunities that arise. And, Dave, for you, stepping out of addiction with spirits, this is a big one for you, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, by by not doing those things, am I actually contributing to things being darker kind of thing? What's the answer to that question? I think yes. Yeah. There's no need to get heavy on ourselves about it. (laughs) It's just the truth. Yeah, everyone just went, oh. I'm feeling really inspired. You're feeling, take the microphone. (laughs) I am. I'm feeling really inspired and fired up. Like Karina said, it's life changing. This whole chapter has been, I thought, right, I'm going to get stuck in. I've started baby steps with my desires. And now I just feel like I've been given the green light. Yeah. I'm just going to motor into it. Take that time to like feel them, feel them, allow them, uh, let yourself. It's like tasting them properly before you run out there, you know, really understand the exact flavour of this desire and let it be instructive in what it tells you about yourself. You know, when we have a desire and we really experience it without, you know, first rushing off to enact it, we learn so much about ourselves and about love. Is this loving, isn't it? But also, wow, what's this telling me about my personality or my? is this an injury or part of my personality? And, and, and also through that we, get, we can get so much inspiration about the best way to do it and all of these things. I've seen that with my daughter because yep. she does a lot of imagining and, and things yep. and play acting and stuff. And I watch her and I think, yeah, she is learning so much and I'm what, learning through her as well. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Just to just to go back to Dave though. So um, I just wanted to clarify, like when we when we're given gifts and we choose to reject them or we don't embrace them in harmony with love, then what what is the natural result? What are we doing? If we're not embracing love, what are we embracing? 
we're choosing not to have love. We're not. We're choosing not to participate in love. Mm. And what is what is that? What are we embracing? We'd be embracing error. Error. Yeah. Fear. Joy. Evil. Can be evil. Can be evil. Addiction. So if you if you look at that naturally, that's darkening us, isn't it? And that's been the state of the earth for a long time. <laughs> and so there's no need to get heavy and judgmental about it. It's just like if you can see that truth as actually a gift. Wow, now I know something. You know, I have a choice laid out here in front of me. I can choose love or I can choose to continue living in fear. I can choose like experiencing my desire or I can choose to stay in addiction. You know, I there's a choice here in front of me. I think AJ mentioned this once. Whatever's not growing is dying. It's the way of the it's the way of the universe. Yeah. But he also spoke about in a talk, you know, when was that? Maybe it was in the free will talk. You know, he talked about as we another bell curvy or another graphy thing, you know, as we go through a day, we can make a choice to be more loving in a situation where we ch previously chose fear, you know. And we, if we do that consistently, we're going to grow. It might not be like the biggest. It might be in your supermarket line. It might be, you know, with your kids, with your dog, with whatever your ethical dealings with business with people. But if you consistently choose love, you're going to grow. If you choose love, then you go, nut fear's better. If you choose love, then you're not going to grow. You have, but it's true. Like Igor said, if, and I, did Bob Dylan say once, get busy, di get busy living or get busy dying, you know? That's the two options you've got. And it's, it's yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Laura and then Joy and then... Um, I think with um, desires too, because of the influence of society, we think that being in desire means we've got to like do something, like real, like make something or create something or you know do something grand in a way yeah. instead of the desire to be humble. Like just the desire to be humble and the desire to, to open the soul is is a desire that's loving for myself in harmony with God and loving for everyone, like, you know. Totally. But it's just the word desire that a lot of people go, oh, I'm not singing, I'm not dancing, I'm not making, yeah. a, a, you know. A, yep. And it's just those kinds of erroneous um, thoughts that we have that can sometimes add to our, I'm not doing enough. Whereas yeah. just going for a walk with a dog and meeting and looking in someone's in the eyes. Yeah. I remember this one man wrote a suicide note He and the note that he wrote was, if one person smiles at me today, I will not kill yeah, myself wow. and he killed yeah. himself and yeah. just that that one sentiment it's like desire is just it doesn't have to be you know desire is anything it's not yeah. something great. yeah, yeah. It's a fair bit of anger in that suicide note though actually about people meeting his demands but <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but when i read it that's with some people in that state they're just so wanting to know that just one person can care yeah Absolutely, yeah. and many of us have become so disillusioned about just the fact that anyone would care for us person, like in a personal way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, don't be afraid to let your desires be grand. Like, I agree with you. We we can start, and our desires can be humble, and that means that they're not going to be flashy and up in lights. But don't be don't be afraid to let yourself dream big. Yeah. Because God created a big soul with a big capacity. <laughs> Joy? I just had the realisation when you were talking to Dave that um, with learning what we're learning from you and AJ comes the responsibility to live it. Yeah. Mm. You can't plead ignorance anymore. No. Hey? Yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> it's it's good. <laughs> it's a good truth. We, we didn't read the small print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The disclaimer. The disclaimer. Yeah, there's a few disclaimers on this path because there's also, once you engage this process, it's going to be very hard to stop. <laughs> yeah. You can't go back. Yeah. I'll just quickly share um, the other disclaimer, one of my guides, when I had that fear, when I actually got the property, I had a lot yep. of fear come up. Yeah. And um, one of my guides warned me, if you continue on this path that you're on, um, the result's going to be joy. So be warned. <laughs> <laughs> and even that brought up a little bit of, oh, 
what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Be warned. So everyone, be happiness. warned. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to engage that soul. Awesome. <laughs> Karina. Um, just uh, getting back to this spiritual manhood, I'm going to say womanhood in this case. I called it spiritual maturity. I think yeah, that's what they're but trying I to But I just want to. indifference to yourself. I just want to say spiritual womanhood can be attained by work, which is alike honouring to God and beneficial to your fellow man. And I have such resistance to reading this long, verbose sort of 100-year-old literature and I tried 10 times or something to read it before you started the book group and, and every time I get down to do the homework I have huge resistance and the first time I started doing this chapter I was just completely superficial. I thought I was just a sham, I was, you know, and then this, prayed about it and the next time my heart was open Yeah. and so, you know, just the... The this miracle of working with God, how we lay the the foundation, and then how that the repercussions of that, because not only have you helped this little soul, yeah. but then this gets recorded and goes around the world, and, and it's just through you experiencing your bell curve, <laughs> and then <laughs> taking action. Not always humbly, but on this, oh. <laughs> you know, on this. I was just saying. How (laughs) inspiring is that to me? It's definitely, you know, very inspiring because (laughs) it's it's the work in action. Thank you. I have to, yeah, I have to say, um, I'm not, I'm not really good at writing that bell curve yet, you know. (laughs) And it's, uh, AJ and I had a really interesting process last night where he said, uh, I, I asked him a question from the chapter and he said, you're asking me this question for you've got the wrong motivation, can't you feel it? And I, it took me into this whole thing. I read the chapter a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know the answer, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There's all this fear of this is totally my error and that I come up against so many times in this process where I think I have to be up here and know all the answers and I have to be appear to be okay. You guys can't see that I'm actually not very, you know, good. <laughs> this is really what I, you know, go through at, when I'm not very humble. And then, and then I read the chapter and I go, I don't understand anything. I can't do this. I have to ask AJ. And then I get really pressured of speech with AJ. What does that mean? What do you mean? Are you saying that? What about this? What, are they, what if they ask this? You know? And then he usually, well, <laughs> last night he was like, babe, got to throw up my hand. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was like... You got to take a look at what's going on here, and then you know. Then I had a big cry about all these feelings that I have, and then then I said, "I'm not asking you any more questions, darling, because actually, <laughs> it's all wrong. I need to just be humble and say, you know, guys, I don't know. <laughs> this is a hard chapter." And then I got up this morning and I read it, and I was like. Oh, it all makes so much sense. This is so beautiful. Could we talk about this for the next three weeks? I love it, you know. And it's just totally when your heart is open, then, you know, everything can work when I'm not living in my addictions. So thank you for that compliment, Karina, but I hardly feel worthy of it. <laughs> I feel I'm still on the up and up of the bell curve. So. It's that honesty that <laughs> actually helps the most. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for it. <laughs> yep, enough of the compliment. <laughs> thank you, Karina. Honestly, thank you, my sister. Yeah, I want to, and I just, I feel you guys are all amazing. Everyone who participates in book group, because there's a, something special about it in that you self-reflect. You're not relying all the time on just being spoon-fed, because I can't spoon-feed you. <laughs> I don't have that level of development. So we're doing this together and you're reflecting and I just feel that's the basis of a relationship with God. The start of humility is our ability to reflect and look at ourselves. So so I think I have to compliment you all back and all the other people who participate long distance. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. It's been a great chapter. <laughs> For more information, visit magdalena-mary.blogspot.com.au.